There's no time. Hello, everybody. It's us again. This is episode 147. Yeah, Girl Scout murders. Oh, going back to the true crime, man. I'm doing like two different cases. Uh, the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders, which I wrote about in one of my Faceless Villain volumes. And also the related, well, it's not really related, but the murder of Marsha Trimble, which actually happened a couple years before the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders. But I decided to put them both together because she was also a Girl Scout and was murdered in the course of doing Girl Scout business. So I thought that would be a good, a true a true crime twofer, as they say. Yeah, and we've been doing movie reviews all, you know, all the, this night, and I've already been drinking, so I'm firing on all cylinders already. <laughs> we'll yeah, see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Dennis hasn't appeared yet. Dennis well, it's probably, so early still, though. I got a feeling Dennis might appear for this. This show. is a crime show, and I feel yeah. like Dennis will probably have some input on yeah. the situation. Um, you know, so the first, well, the first crime was actually sort of unsolved. The second one was solved, but only recently. Yeah. So we'll kind of get into that in a little bit. Been looking forward to a true crime episode. Have you, Dennis? Yes, I have. <laughs> Good to see you again, Jenny. Well, uh, Good to see you. thanks, I guess. I, 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 you know, I've been keeping out an eye, I keep my eye, eyes out for you, you know, like I do. Should I be worried about that? Oh, no, of course not. I'm going to invite you to church with me. We're going to go to church. Maybe. No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so what do we got to talk about? Monetize the channel. Yeah, we're going to do some shout outs before we yeah. get to the Girl Scout murdering. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we brought this up on our last show about Norwegian black metal, yeah. but we have decided to monetize the channel. Hasn't made a difference so far, but we'll see. Well, we it's only been monetized for like two days, like man. Two days. Chill out. I've been watching. I watch them fucking numbers. <laughs> I watch those numbers. I'm also, um, I reconfigured, reconfigured some shit on my fucking tablet. little tablet. Okay. I put one of those, it was SIM, what do they call it? What do they call it? SIM card? SIM card. SIM card. Yeah. Expanded its memory. You know, some, you know, some of you might, you I was going to say, you sound like Dennis, like almost yeah, accidentally. Yeah. So, <laughs> expanded his memory so I could juggle some shit around and I'm, I'm going to do a 13 o'clock Instagram. Yeah. Finally. Cause we're people were asking us about Instagram. I just, I was going to do so, it, I just haven't got around to it. I'm going to see the best way to implement an Instagram program. Uh, you know, maybe we maybe we can get some more subscribers or something. We'll see how. I'm going to talk to a buddy of mine who's in, in the business and ask him the best way to do it. Little Matt. You guys <laughs> would love Matt. Matt loves fucking Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> he loves old Sylvester Stallone. He told me I had old man muscle. He's in a fucking war, uh, he's in an arms race with me. <laughs> who can work out and get bigger faster? I got twenty years ahead of him though. See, he goes, "That's old man muscle." Old he man had muscle. one of those. He had one of those workout machines. It was the uh, uh, Chuck Norris workout machine yeah, yeah, yeah. with all the fucking wires. And I shit. used to have one of those. That shit didn't have not enough resistance, man. Not enough resistance. No, I found that as well. Not enough resistance. He's like, but it uses your own body weight. I said, dude, man, your own body weight ain't shit. More resistance. He listened to me. Motherfucker got big just in like a month. <laughs> Walked into the club, he's fucking swole. I said, "What's up, little swole?" <laughs> little he's like, swole. Yeah, little swole. And he, you know, I'm not. Man, I'm getting off the fucking subject. Yeah, you are. I'm drunk. What else? So is I'm talking. This is bad, you guys. He's drunk at the beginning of the show. It's okay, man. Because, Pretty like sick. I said, this is the second thing. Like we recorded a movie yeah, we earlier. Yeah, we were earlier. So drinking. he he was drinking through that drinking too. Tequila. So we'll see if he's even like coherent at that. No, I'll, I'll so probably coherent. just be waving his arms around. It's just like when I'm driving. You know, I'm talking about a rise to the trick. <laughs> I rise I to the admit that on camera. Just damn. like when I'm driving, I rise to the occasion. I just stay focused. You know, I just watch those lines. We'll see how that goes. At one time, we came back to the strip club. I don't know how I fucking made it. A couple years back, remember that shit? Oh my god! Everybody went to the strip club. Do on you that want to night. tell that to our? Uh... Oh man, we had this battle of the fucking bands. No, not battle of the bands. What was it? Was it the battle ba of the bartenders. Battle of the bartenders, and our bartenders were fucking. You know, he it was one the... of our. It was one of our favorite bartenders. Yeah. His name is. He invited Hector. us all over to Rachel's. This is fucking high class fucking. Very, very famous strip very club. Very famous strip club. So we were down there, and man, we just got fucking sloshed. Half of us, and I'm talking about, there was a lot of people there. Half of us slept in the damn parking lot. 
I, made I, it back. I fell asleep in the back seat of the car. I sure. made it back, man. I thought I was I thought I was looking through a fucking toilet paper tube driving. I was just And I almost the... left my credit card there also. Yeah. I was growling the whole way back. You were. <laughs> well, from what I remember, I, was fighting I, was, I fell yeah. asleep in the back seat. I went out to the car to get something out of the car and fell asleep in the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> Strippers everywhere. Uh, it was a bad the night. The strippers was, loved it. Well, no, yeah. because I... I strippers remember, loved us. I remember that night fondly, actually, because one thing, if you've never been to strip clubs... Yeah. One thing about strip clubs that maybe a lot of people don't know is that the strippers fucking love it when women turn up. Jen, because they're so Jane's used... Jane's got these big-ass boobs. Well, the they're so used to, like, dealing with... Like, yeah. Well, one, they're so used to, like, dealing with creepy-ass dudes all the time. Yeah. And so it's probably, like, a nice change. They're like, right. hey, a girl, hooray. Yeah, it was... And, we were and all, they will tell you, like, all their problems. Yeah. They will, like, you're my sister. They we were all gawked out and shit, too. Yeah, they super appreciated yeah, so it. they're into all that. Yeah. And, you know... Little I don't Kay. know. Little Kaylee was there. She was dressed up as a cat. Yeah, as like a ninja she, kid. Like she does. Have you guys ever seen Alita Battle Angel? That's what Kaylee looks like. Looks just like that. She does look just like that. It's she's just like, like every time I was watching that movie, I'm like, that just like, looks. That looks just like our. She's like four foot eight and like eighty pounds <laughs> with cat ears that add ten pounds to her. The cat ears, big ass fucking cat ears. Anyway, we got to get back on time. <laughs> All um, right, so like I we said, we monetize the channel. Yes. I don't. Uh, hopefully, it's not you know inconveniencing anybody. We're going to see if that gives us anything out of the fucking algorithms. I, I don't know if it'll make a difference. If it doesn't make a we'll difference, we'll see. Like okay. I said, it's, it's an experiment. We're yeah. seeing if it makes... All, all we're trying to do necessarily, because I know that it doesn't... I mean, you need like 50 squintillion views before you make any money off it. But what we're trying to do is see if yeah. YouTube promotes us or, or rises up in the algorithm, right. algorithm so that like, um, you know, we have more views more yeah. subscribers we're just seeing if, if how you are new work. to the show and you don't understand the format jenny and i fucking talk to the regulars first before you know if you don't like it just fucking unsub get fuck out of here it's gonna take <laughs> us a few minutes and we have to get fired up before the show starts and we just have to give people news and stuff um so instagram is probably coming but i'm gonna figure out the best way to do it Tom's gonna good, be working gonna on get that. some good graphics and everything yeah, i'm, I'm gonna be on that shit if it's going to be worth it, I'm going to see. We'll see. You know, people have requested it. Also, new shirts are coming. Okay. Jenny's going to design the silk screen. I'm going to execute the silk screen. I was doing it since I was an itty bitty baby. Back before, back when your mama was a baby, I was making fucking, <laughs> I was making silk screens. Back when I was in high school, we did silk screen the old way. Throw that shit down there inside the screen with a squeegee and go through like the, it's the, it's the best shirt you can, money can fucking buy because that 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 paint goes inside that material and it never comes out. Some of this shit that, that that they're making now, I'm not satisfied with how long that it lasts. And I want our products to be the best. And it also, they're cheaper for us to produce and we can pass on savings to you. I don't think, I don't think that the, the shirt will break $20. Well, like including. I said, I wanted something that I could send out to our $20 and up patrons and right. our contest winner every quarter right. without it costing. Because I think last time when I sent stuff from Zazzle, I think it ended up costing me like almost $300 like yeah. to send stuff to everybody. And, and I want to be able to sell it off of eBay. Okay? Yeah, that's everybody it. We're going to set up eBay, an eBay store. Everybody has an eBay account. And I want it, want it to be able to uh, be like 1999 with plus you know with the shipping included we'll see how it goes but they'll look like this they'll be one color white on black yeah which that's traditional and jenny's going to do, do the designs there's new ways of making silk screens so you can get really good details and stuff having to do with how is it done now jenny it, it, you well you it basically to the printer, right? just well you have to send it to a well unless you have a printer at home which i don't okay but you send it to a printer get it print uh, print it on a transparency and then right. you burn it onto a screen with a okay. photo emulsion. Back in the old days, we used to trace it out and cut it with yeah, a Yeah, you had to cut it with an all, exacto But that's knife. the old fashioned way. I had there's to a, do that. There, 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 yeah, there's a better way of doing it that gives you a better image, and we're, we're going to use that way. But, uh, you know, I got two garages and build motorcycles and shit like that and fucking places to work out. I can sit there and knock out shirts to order, and they're going to look cool. The back will have a little logo, me and Jenny in the back. And the front will be a theme, each yeah. one. And uh, our, subscri our uh, subscribers who are 20 and up will get one yeah, every patrons. quarter. Yeah. Patrons, excuse me. Yeah, we're going to do a different one every quarter. Different one every quarter, so it'll be different every time. And uh, we'll also um, make them available on YouTube for purchase. Yeah. 
Uh, on eBay, you mean? On eBay, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I'm fucked up. I'm a, you know, <laughs> I'm inter, interwebbing. Oh, boy. Inter, we're talking about interweb. <laughs> I told you guys I was firing on all cylinders this early. <laughs> we're going to we'll talk about these Girl Scouts that got murdered. What else do uh, we have before One we One more shout out. out. I would like to give a shout out to friend of the show, Rob, who sent us a DVD today of The That's Thing, right. of the, the thing, sequel. The sequel to The Thing. Yeah. It's, it's a good movie. I've seen it. Yes, we saw it in the theater, actually. Yeah, we saw it in the theater. And I actually, I really, really liked it. Loved the first one. It had Crussell. Crussell was in it. If you guys don't know who the... If you're not regulars, you don't you know You have a Crussell. crush on Crussell. Crussell is, is crush with Kurt a K. Russell. It also has to do with crush, like mad crush. Yes. Yeah, so and it's it's, it's all like... straight. Don't worry about it. It's all straight. It's all heterosexual. Uh-huh. Something, of course it's heterosexual. <laughs> you just had to make sure to mention that. Sometimes, sometimes... Okay. I mean... It, <laughs> The proof of greatness is when one man can recognize the greatness of another man. I know. I you gotcha. understand that? I recognize the greatness of Crussell. I gotcha. I gotcha. He's in the new Quentin Tarantino movie. Are you going to want to see that? Of course. It looks pretty good, actually. I, have to I like Crussell as Santa Claus. That's how much I like Crussell. That was a good movie. That's fucking right. Christmas Chronicles. We Christmas talked Chronicles. About, we talked about that on one of our Christmas gotta movie do, We got to do a review of that That was one. a good movie. I liked fucking it. awesome movie. I liked man. it a lot. He what was it, like kind of a crotchety Santa Claus. He was a badass Santa. <laughs> badass Santa, but he was a good guy. Uh, yeah, I liked that movie. That was a, a Santa that could, possibly could be carrying a gun. You don't know. I would actually kind of be disappointed if he wasn't. He's got a gun. <laughs> yeah. Like down the back of his pants. Yeah. And like you didn't know, it, like he didn't say anything about it, but mm. like you give him any lip and he's just like, what chonk? And he just like yeah. fucking whips it out. Yeah, it's a 1911. Man, you've thought, of, you've thought about this fucking a lot. Fucking right. It's a 1911. <laughs> it's engraved. It's engraved with you Christmas motif on it. You know, with like, oh, it's all engraved. It's got like a little snowmans and shit snowmans, on it. Snowmans. Snowflakes. It's got, it's got fucking reindeer horn grips. It's got fucking... <laughs> It's got a fucking mistletoe engraving and shit <laughs> all in there, man. Fucking right. I got it all figured out. Tom has an active fantasy life, as you can say. Yeah. <laughs> he's already he's already picturing Christmas themed yeah. guns. Guns, yeah. For a yeah. Kurt Russell Santa Cult Claus. Cult 1911s, yeah. To carry around. Yeah, we're the, not talking about that Six Sawyer bullshit. We're talking about the original cult. In in the waistband. Series in 70. the elastic waistband of his yeah. Santa pants. Series 70 cult. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. But, yeah. Cult Delta Elite 10 millimeter. Yeah. Fucking scrolled out like that. Yeah, 1911. <laughs> All right. I don't know. How did we get off on that tangent? I don't, I don't fucking know. I'm loaded. We were just... <laughs> <laughs> we were just thanking Rob. Thank you very much for sending us... Thank you very much. ...the sequel of The Thing, because that was like a kick-ass movie we saw in the theater. Yeah. And we will probably be we'll, reviewing it on a we'll retrospective sometime got, in the next few months. We got a lot of shit on the list, but we'll do it. Yeah, we do, because I just bought like a bunch of DVDs and also Shudder added a bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah. that I would like to do reviews of, such as Carrie and Ghost Story and some other ones. So those will probably be coming up as well. But I also I bought a big pile of DVDs, and i got to work through those too. So if I don't get to it, I mean, I'll get to it in the next few months, I promise. All right. So let's talk about... Let's do the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders first. Okay, now, show's getting ready to begin. So while you're on your commute, or if you're in bed, okay, you cuddle up cuddle up fucking just kind of roll up inside the comforter all right put your headphones on all right if you're in bed if you're in your commute just look out the window of the train or firmly grip the wheel i was gonna say if you're two. driving don't look yeah, out yeah look yeah in yeah the front. exactly look exactly. where you're go going ahead, go ahead go ahead jenny look where you're going go ahead jenny set it up set it up because I was going to say, just... That, I'm on this ride, too. That just reminded me that, like, there's there's one thing that really bothers me in movie scenes. Yeah. And it's whenever characters that are driving a car yeah. turn to the passenger and have, like, an talk. extended conversation with the passenger. I'm like, watch the road. I've God had, I've, damn I've had it. people drive, and then I'm in the back seat, and they turn back and look at me while they're right. driving. I'm like, oh, now watch the road. Stop it. Can't oh, my God. Shit. It only takes, like, two fucking seconds. Not even yeah. two seconds. Come on now. Yeah, but yeah, it's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. All right, that really, you... every time that I see that in a movie, that like drives me fucking crazy. Okay, let's get this show. Started. All right, so this, this show, this show, is about Girl Scouts that were murdered. Yeah. Were, are they all unsolved? The first case is unsolved. Okay. The second one was solved, but not until recently. Okay. Through what DNA. Made you, what made you just come up with Girl Scout stuff? 
Well, the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders is actually a really famous unsolved case, and I wrote about it for one of my books. Okay. And right. somebody a long time ago asked me about the Marsha Trimble murder, and she was also a Girl Scout. Um, so I thought, well, I'd mm. put them both together on one show. Because, like I said, they're not otherwise related, but the girls that were the victims were all Girl Scouts. I understand. Thanks, Dennis. I'll be here with you. I'll be, uh, okay. I'll, I'll be on this journey with you, Jenny. Okay, to make sure that you you tell it right. Okay. Okay. That that's good. Oh well, of course I'm in charge. You know, I'm making sure that you're going to deliver well, the story. And and what are you going to do to me if I don't do it right? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I was going to say, don't pull that Dennis shit on me. I'll pop yeah. you right in the Dennis face. Dennis Raider. <laughs> Dennis Raider. Dennis Raider might appear at any fucking moment when I met, when I got this. Yeah, that was a really Dennis Raider, man. Yeah. Don't even. I'm gonna yeah. look like fucking turn your ass inside out. Come yeah. on now. I'm the only man that can channel the spirit of Dennis Rader while Dennis Rader is still alive. Still alive. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's still alive. Motherfucker. All right, so let's talk about the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders. Now, this happened in 1977. If you would like to see um, a kind of extensive look into the case, I found a documentary on YouTube earlier today, which is called Someone Cry for the Children, and it's narrated by Johnny fucking cash i thought you were gonna say johnny depp no okay much johnny cash co- much cooler cool. than johnny depp yeah. johnny fucking cash yeah because i started watching it like i wasn't really paying attention because i was yeah. doing something else i'm like god that sounds like johnny cash's voice yeah. and then like it says narrated by johnny that cash. was the there original is... glenn dancing yeah yeah man in black motherfucker yeah. <laughs> all right i'll so... hear that train a coming coming around the oh, man, I love okay johnny i'm not gonna cash. talk about it I'm, I'm, I'm i love good. johnny cash but yeah so he narrates a documentary but it's like an hour and a half long um, so, and it has like a lot of interviews with the, the parents of the victims and, you know, various people that worked on the case. So if you want to check that out, you can go check that out. Somebody posted on YouTube earlier. So, all right. So it's the summer of 1977. Now there is this, uh, Girl Scout camp and it was called Camp Scott. It's in Northeastern Oklahoma in Mays County. And what they would do is they would have like all the little Girl Scouts come for like two weeks at a time, like during the summer. And they would like do, you know, outdoor shit like Girl Scouts do. I mean, I was in the Girl Scouts when I was little. So it's like, you know, you go out there, you tie knots, you make fires, you do all, you do I all buy that them, We buy them cookies of. every fucking year, too. Well, the cookies Those are, little thin mint cookies. The cookies the, are delicious. Well, yeah, clearly yeah. thin mints are the best. It's like. The little, the, yeah. Thin and the ones with the coconut crush the other ones and s- the Samoas. Samoas, yeah, hell yes. They just crush the other hell ones. Hell yes. Do they even have other ones? Uh, yes, I, I, they, they do. do. They but... do. They're they're all good. They had the peanut butter ones too. I mean, come on, the peanut butter ones were fucking okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. really good. You're covered right, in okay. chocolate. You know these You're British right. people don't. These British people don't understand. <laughs> I always I'm always driving fucking British people behind, <laughs> behind peanut butter. Okay. <laughs> Every time I run across a fucking red coat, he doesn't like peanut butter. <laughs> God damn it. But no, you better buy some uh, Girl Scout cookies. I'm giving a shout out to the Girl Scouts. I'm telling y'all, buy some goddamn Girl Scout cookies. They're good as shit, man. And they're fantastic frozen. Well, especially the Thin Those Mints. Those Thin Mint ones? I mean, God I could eat, seriously, damn. I could eat a whole sleeve of the Thin Mints. Like frozen Thin Mints, I will eat a whole sleeve of that. No shame. Hell yeah. And also, they make that Hell, ice yeah. cream where they're like b- bits yeah. of it are in there. It's they know delicious. what they're doing. They know what they're doing. No, and I should say that when I was a Girl Scout many, 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 yeah. many years ago, one of our things that we did when we did the cookie sales, we actually went door to door. But I didn't really like doing that because I, you know, I, I have social anxiety. But um, we, <laughs> I don't like going to strangers' fucking houses trying to sell cookies. I'm like, fuck that. They could be murderers. You know how I am. But uh, we actually had a booth that we set up at the mall, which was the Volusia Mall, which is in Daytona Beach, still there as far as I know. And uh, so we set it up and we stocked it all with cookies and then we were like selling to people that were coming through the mall. Now I should say that the Thin Mints easily, they just demolished all the competition. We ran out of Thin Mints at 9 a.m. Yeah, they're good. And then, like, in the rest of everybody would come up. Like, 99% of the people came up. You got any Thin Mints? No, they're all gone. In we case, sold them all. In case you foreign... Uh, fuck off. In case, you, <laughs> in case you foreign savages don't know what fucking Thin Mint cookies are, these are little fucking thin chocolate cookies covered in chocolate, but they're chocolate and mint. We've yeah. taken it to new to, to new. Islands. Honestly, chocolate and mint They're is like a minty chocolate thin things. little wafer. They're good, man. But the other ones are good, too. The peanut butter ones are good. 
Also, like I said, Thin Mints are like way well, in the front. Yeah. Samoas are my second favorite. Samoas. There's something kind of... That have like the flake coconut on them. They're crispy on the bottom, but they're chewy at the same time. It's a cookie with coconut, kind of like the Isn't filling from a... is there caramel in that? What the hell yeah, else is on I that? don't remember. It's like the filling from a, from, a, from a Mounds candy bar with chocolate around it and stripes. Chocolate stripes and shit. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that's what I'm going to say. Fucking I mean, awesome. if you really like it's Thin like crispy Mints. and chewy at the same time and coconutty, that shit would go great with rum. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hell yes. I just dunk them in rum like We're you would just... dunk with, dunk with, that's a, you know. That's not a bad idea, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because you get the chocolate chip cookies and you dunk them in milk. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. You get those damn Samoas and dunk them in fucking rum. Mm. I bet you that would be good. It probably Coconut would be. Coconut rum, yeah. Now the Thin Mints are good dipped in coffee. Or Malibu. You could dunk them in Malibu. Oh, I yeah, like that, that idea much that'd be better. even better, yeah. Malibu. That'd probably be much better. Yeah. The Thin Mints, you guys, if you didn't know, when it's not Girl Scout cookie season, uh, which if you're not from the United States, I don't know if you have Girl Scouts over whatever, wherever you are, but, um, you know, there's only a certain season that they sell cookies. And um, if you don't, go buy some Keebler uh, grasshoppers. They're pretty oh, much exactly fuck. the same. Yeah, They're pretty much good. exactly good, the yeah. same. I mean, the Girl Scouts, they ca- they charge a lot for the cookies, but it's, you know, it's for a good cause. Whatever. It's so funny because our show, you know, we cover these kind of topics all, and everybody listens, but everybody knows that we always get sidetracked. We start talking about food. <laughs> <laughs> we do, don't we? <laughs> or music. I, I or, had a feeling that like when and everybody I was, says yeah do some of the more of that sidetrack shit when I when I was like <laughs> when I was thinking about doing this topic I said I know we're gonna get off on this whole tangent about Girl Scout, Girl Scout cookies, cookies. <laughs> I know we are damn don't they have some lemon ones too they have lemon ones too right now uh, the lemon I know that Sunshine had them damn lemon coolers you know because I, I love lemon cookies fuck man. I'm all I'm, I'm a, about that. I'm a child of the South, and so is Jenny. You know, they had these damn fucking things. Sunshine made these things called lemon coolers, and they were like around about that big. And it Those was are a, fantastic. It was a white cookie with powdered sugar on kind top. Kind of like a wedding cookie, but with Yeah, lemon. and instead of chocolate chips in there, it had lemon chips, and that shit would fuck you up, man. I mean, just, they were, you know, you just couldn't stop eating them. That's why Southerners are so fucking fat. We know what to yep. eat, you know. It's a constant war against fat. Tell them, Jenny. Preach it, brother. Don't I fucking you, preach no, I'm, I'm, I'm right here with you. Because we know how to eat. It's a struggle. We know how to eat. The struggle is real. Fucking right. Well, we got, you know, it's like there's so much. It's like World War Three. Okay. <laughs> Battle of the bowls. <laughs> Battle of the fucking fat bowls. Good. <laughs> All right. So let's stop talking about cookies because okay. I'm getting hungry. All right. All right so <laughs> we're talking about serious shit now. You ready? I'm ready, but you make me think of going to Captain D's and get all that fucking fried fish that we oh, ate last dear. week. God damn, that's we're gonna take a video next time we go to next Captain time we go to D's Captain D's and eat that fucking southern fucking eating all fried, the fried fish, fried fried fish with the hush puppies and the, they would love that shit. Show them that. Okay, we gotta get back to the subject. I, yeah. I gotta get. I'm 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 just firing on all cylinders. My turbocharged right now. Turbocharged. I'm turbocharged. I'm he's going down the wrong. Kukulkan charged. Yeah. Okay. I know. I got him take think- over, Jenny. Take I got him over. thinking about food, and he's like, yeah, he's just over. going off in fucking take random over. directions. All right. Take over. I'm, I got to rest. <laughs> he's got to rest. <laughs> As I said. All right. We're going back to the summer of 1977. This is in Oklahoma. Now, there is a Girl Scout camp called Camp Scott, and all the little Girl Scouts go there. It's for about uh, ages 8 to 18. They go there, and they every summer they have different ones. They go there like every two weeks, and they have like a bunch of... They, they call them tents, but they were actually kind of like a tent top, and then uh, the base part of it was like a wooden floor. So it was like a permanent wooden floor with like a, a tent top over it. So it wasn't just like a tent like on the ground or whatever. So they had like a bunch of those in this particular camp. So this is, uh, this is a 410-acre camp, Camp Scott. So this is June 12th, 1977. So there are about 140 girls, and they take off from this place called the Magic Empire Council Building, uh, which is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They all get on a bus, and they go out to, it's about a 40, 50-mile journey out to Camp Scott. So the camp is in 10 different, like, little units or whatever they want to call them odds 
Yeah, pretty much. No, yeah. So they pretty they separated all the girls like depending yeah. on their age because like I said, some of the girls were really young. They were only like eight or nine years old, and some of them were like older, like older. It's taking me back when I went to Bible study camp when I was a kid, man. We had. So Did much... you? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. I never went. First to time I ever made ever. out with a girl. At Bible would, camp. <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah, you guys don't understand, man. Fucking at Bible study camp, it was all just a bunch of teenagers. They were all kind of trying to get it on. So were all the counselors. It was like straight out of the fucking Friday the 13th, really. I was going to... Except y'all didn't get murdered with a machete. No, so no. That's, but that's a plus. I, I had fun, man. I was, you know, I think... Uh, I've heard that about those like yeah, Bible camps. I was like probably about 11. And I kissed a girl that was about 12. I, just Ooh, kissed an older it. woman. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I kissed a girl that was about 12. And on the bus. Oh, I, I thought I you were going to say on the butt. No, nah, I was on the bus. <laughs> I was on, on the, the bus butt. when that shit happened. Oh. <laughs> but then once I cooled off and everything, I was I was, I was, I was, too shy to go up and talk to her again. Yeah, that that, you know checks, out. that could, checks out. You know what I'm talking about? I was like, yeah. uh, no, nah, I can't talk to her. And yeah. I just kissed mm-hmm. her. I kissed her ass like the day before. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah, that's how it well, was. Well, uh, all, kid, all kids are like that. Yeah. That's, that's pretty universal. Yeah. All right, so... The the one camp that we're going to be, or the one unit uh, or pod or whatever that we're discussing in this uh, in this case, was called uh, Kiowa. Kiowa, I guess, was how you pronounce it. Um, now it was kind of like one of the most um, kind of remote of all the ten units. It was kind of there was sort of forest around it and stuff. Now at this point uh on this particular trip there were about 27 girls in this one unit and there were seven different tents now you were kind of like depending on how old you were um you know they kind of gave you little roommates depending on you know the girls ages so they go they put four girls per tent but in tent number eight which was the tent that we're going to be talking about um there was only three girls and this tent in particular was the only one that could not be seen from the counselor's tent because there was like a there was like a building that had showers in it and it was kind of like blocking the view of it. So it was kind of like the most remote tent. It was like the last in the row. So it's June twelfth, the evening that they got there. Um, you know, they had arrived by bus. Now the three girls um, that were uh, in this particular tent. They were named Lori, Doris, and Michelle, and they d- hadn't known each other previously, but since they were roommates, they kind of started making friends with each other and whatnot. Um, Lori Farmer was only eight years old, um, and Doris Milner was 10 years old. Michelle Gousset was nine years old. So the three of them are in this one particular tent, which was tent number eight. Now, it's about 6 p.m. Um, the girls had dinner. Then they all go back to their tents and then there's really, really big storm like comes through the area and the counselors told all the girls to kind of stay in their tents. It's like, why don't you, you know, write letters to your moms or whatever um, because you can't really go outside because the weather was too bad. So they're all kind of stuck in their tents. Now, later that same night, because I guess they the storm had gone on for a long time and they were all kind of confined to their tents at that point. So several hours later, um, a bunch of people started reporting hearing like some weird noises like back in the woods. Like uh, some of them said it sounded kind of like a uh, croaking, like a bullfrog type of, or, a, or like a bullhorn or like a combination of those two things. They kept hearing these weird like croaking noises back in the woods. They also started seeing these like lights, like it was a flashlight that was flashing, but then like you would flash your flashlight into the woods and then it would go off. You know what I mean? Like someone was kind of back there watching them. Hmm. So they thought that was uh, kind of strange, but no one really thought that much about it at the time. Now, as the night went on, um, some girls also later reported that they had heard um, a little girl crying and that they had heard someone calling for their mother. But they didn't really do anything about it because they thought, oh, well, the counselors will take care of it or... You know, they couldn't really tell where it was coming from, and it was kind of, like, far away. Yeah, in case anybody does, can't really imagine what the hell's going on, these kind of these kind of fucking events in the United States, and the one that I went to was probably in the uh, very late 70s, okay? Um, there's a festive environment. Yeah. And it's constant activity. 
So it would be kind of hard to differentiate between something that was serious and something people just fucking around. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it would be... Okay, when I when I went to Bible study camp, which is very similar to kind of situation, there was no Bible. There was no study involved in it. It was more about just fucking Easter egg hunts. It was neither Bible nor yeah. study. Yeah, <laughs> singing songs or running around playing with flashlights at night and shit like that. And ha- and having, like, counselors pull p- pranks on you. Yeah, I feel like a and lot of summer camps counselor. are like that. That's all it was like. It was yeah. fun. It was fun. And little groups were doing different things at different times, depending on what the age groups was i was probably in one of the younger age groups i think there were some older ones above me and they were doing things that were a little more sophisticated than what we could do yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah because you know i guess i was probably kind of grouped up with the little kids you know at that time i was probably about 10 or 11 even though you were going after older women even back she then. was in the same group as me it's just some, chick, <laughs> some, chick, just just some little girl that was on the bus with me you know what i mean i was Did she chub- had big boobies i was chubby and she was chubby no uh uh-uh. <laughs> no, not that I remember. I can't barely remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, everybody was doing that kind of shit. Well, that's the thing, too. And everybody I've... was fucking trying to make out. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, particularly in camp situations like this, I mean, this was all little girls. And as far as I know, I don't yeah. know if any of the counselors were male. I think that all the counselors were female. I mean, all mm-hmm. the interviews uh, with counselors that I've seen about in documentaries about this, they've mm-hmm. all been women. But... um it seems to Some me that... Some men knew that this event was going down, though, I'll tell you that. Well, well, this was a this was a Girl Scout camp. It was there every summer. Yeah. Like, you know, different groups of Girl Scouts would come, like, over the course of Some every dude, summer. Some dude knew about this. Well, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much what they're thinking. Yeah. But another thing, too, is that even when you're camping out in the woods and stuff and you hear weird noises, like you hear a croaking noise or you even hear crying or something like that... You know, some people are like, oh, why didn't they do it? Like, you know, in hindsight, you're wondering, like, why didn't anybody do anything about it? But it's... In a big group of little kids, there's always a bunch of different noise going that's on. That's what I mean. There's always... It, it could be a lot of different... dumb shit. You know it, could mean? it could be a lot be... of different things. It's yeah. like, your mind doesn't... I mean, happily, because usually it doesn't happen, but your mind doesn't immediately jump to right. someone's getting murdered. Right. It's also... Because it was, that's a very rare occurrence, It was also thankfully. a different time for any of you young... For, True that. For any of you youngsters... We fucking grew up as like feral kids. It was a very different time. People weren't worried, you know what I mean? We weren't really pampered. Yeah. I mean, shit, I was a little kid going down in the goddamn fucking flood control system of California, you know, where they fucking filmed Terminator 2, you know, down yeah. in Yeah, I was playing in there. And I wasn't well, even supposed to, but we did it anyway. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, what I mean? You know we were going back in the woods setting shit on going fire. Going back in the so. woods, setting shit on fire, stealing <laughs> gasoline out of the lawnmower and setting the woods on fire. Did it It was fucking dangerous to be a boy back in those back in that era, but it was normal. <laughs> I fell through a damn fish tank one time. <laughs> cut my fucking legs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stood up on top of that fish tank while they were squirting with the hose and I <laughs> broke through it and it cut me all up. Good they job. Had to give me all the kind of stitches. We did all kinds of cool That's shit. The Darwin like Award, right there. Well, well, it's not. Was, a, it's not. A I was like Darwin eight. Award I was like seven or eight. Lived, yeah, I was like seven or eight when that happened. Yeah, kids do dumb shit all the time. Yeah, we had. We grew up in a very different way. It was very third world, very man of action type fucking. Well, y'all were it. the kind of kids because I think my brothers <coughs> might have done this too. But it's like you know where it's like, oh, I'm gonna take the blanket off my bed, tie it on my neck, and pretend I'm Superman and yeah. jump off the roof. Jump off the a roof house. and sure. hey, get get that shotgun. Sure. You know what I mean? Get your dad's shotgun. Yep. Yeah, fuck right. Shoot up the fucking doghouse. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. You know, and you're... Which is, I would imagine, to a lot of people, maybe in New, in the New England area of the United States or maybe in Europe or in other countries, that this would be just unfathomable that an eight-year-old boy could go and get his dad's shotgun and just shoot shoot up the fucking woods. And dad like, you were shooting? Yeah, I was shooting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we Try still, not to shoot anybody in the yeah. face. You shooting? Okay, yeah, I was shooting. <laughs> <laughs> just the way it was. It, it was, yeah. yeah. You know, well, that's how we were raised. Yeah. All right, yeah. so, as I said, all this weird shit had been going on in the night, but no one really thought all that much about it. Now, the following morning, it was fairly early. I think it was only it was between 6 and 7 in the morning. So, one of the camp counselors gets up, and she's going toward the building with the showers in it. And then she sees something... It looked like part of uh, a sleeping bag that was kind of laying at the edge of the tree line. So she thought that was kind of weird. So she goes over there to look at it. And then what she sees by the sleeping bag is 
Doris Milner, the 10 year old. And she is laying there, obviously dead, laying outside the sleeping bag. Why was she obviously dead? Just was she cut up? She was, um, she had been beaten. Okay. And they would later determine that all of the girls had also been raped. Damn. So they were, yeah, they were all messed up. So they're laying there with their sleeping bags and, and whatnot. So they call the cops. The cops come and kind of look around the area and they find the other two girls that were in the same tent, Lori and Michelle. And they were also kind of next to their sleeping bags. Fucking Savage did it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, all three girls were sexually assaulted. I've seen varying sources on this. Um, I think at least one of them was sodomized. I'm not, I think it was Doris, but please don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. But um, the other ones were raped for sure. Now, um, Michelle and Doris uh, also had had their wrists tied behind their backs and had gags in their mouths. Um, although Lori, who was the youngest one, she was only eight years old, um, she had not been bound or gagged. Now, Michelle had been strangled, but, um, or, yeah, I think Michelle had been strangled. One of them was strangled. See, I'm sorry. And I then just... the other two had been uh, beaten to death in the head. They had blunt force trauma to the head. See, I'm sorry. I just have to kill a motherfucker like that. I'm sorry. Well, I don't think anyone would blame I you. I would cut that motherfucker's head off. I don't, I don't think anyone would yeah. blame you. And not with a sword, but like a, something like a pocket knife. I'd cut that motherfucker. Well, yeah, it would have pocket. to be. You would have to make yeah. him suffer. I oh, mean, yeah. you can't just like I'd be talking to him when he's doing that shit. That's what like I mean. That, yeah. I mean something yeah. like this. Yeah. You kind of want to. You're gonna have to die. Skin the dude. You're gonna have to slowly. Die. Fucking right. Or just like cut his pieces I off. Just don't, I, his don't, toes. I don't understand the whole concept of mercy. These are little you. girls, and yeah. this is not someone that I mean. I don't think I've never seen anybody no. say that this is not this someone is people's that knew children, them. man. These are people's children. These girls that are not old enough to even fucking know anything. Very innocent people. I just, I just can't understand. I can't fathom. I couldn't even fathom mercy on somebody who did that. Just, I just no. can't. I just can't. And like I said, there's no... I mean, I'm not saying that there's ever a reason to do anything like this, but there was never... It was completely random. They're out there having fun and shit. And he's yeah, they're just at this yeah. camp. This was their first night at the camp. They'd never been to Girl Scout camp before. I would cut They were mother. all excited about going. I would cut that motherfucker's face off first. I just can't stand that shit. Yeah, rightly and, so. And, yeah, and it's just like, you know what I mean? These girls haven't even, aren't even old enough to have lived a life yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is supposed to be... a a time of innocence. Yep. Even you could go to fucking a maximum security prison in the United States and tell those motherfuckers what this guy did and they would be outraged. Yeah, that's they, what I mean. Like, it's like even like a even dude who did hardened that would, convicts would kill your ass for that shit. Yeah, yeah. this is not gonna fly. No. These are three no. adorable, precious little yeah. girls. Just hanging out at a Girl Scout camp, just yeah. sleeping in a tent. There's a storm. They're writing letters to their moms. And yeah. you know what sucks is, like, I saw a documentary about this, and, like, the mom still has the letter that the little girl wrote to her. It's just sad. In the, just, in the tent, like, just a couple hours before she got fucking raped and murdered. That's just, that's just fucking sad. Yeah, it's fucking horrible. I got a feeling... I got a feeling that this is a young dude, maybe a teenager. Um, they're not entirely sure who did it. They they have their suspicions, but I I'm not gonna say I don't know if I know it was this dude or not. But you know, we'll get to. I mean, that. there are adult men that have been known to do shit like this. Uh, yeah. But they're fucking <laughs> mentally a young. They're mentally children. Ones that do a lot of it. You know, their development's fucked up. But uh, yeah, obviously. there's something about this that makes me think. I mean, that's just my feelings that whoever did this wasn't really that much older than these girls. Maybe we're talking about a 16, 17-year-old guy, maybe. That's my instincts. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Maybe wrong. So after these three little girls were found murdered, um, the creepy thing is that, I mean, I don't know if it's creepy because I guess that's probably what they would do, but they didn't call, they didn't tell the rest of the girls at the camp that the three of them had been murdered. They just said, hey, we're going to do some activities over here today. And then they very, they said, and then we're going to get on the bus and we're going to go back to Tulsa and we're going to call your parents and say something went wrong and you guys all have to go home. Now, the shitty thing, too, was that when they first contacted these little girls' parents about what had happened, they didn't tell them that they'd been murdered. They just said, oh, there was an accident, quote unquote. Mm. 
So they didn't tell them. And uh, and honestly, I don't think they realized that they had even been like raped and murdered until a lot later. That's rough, man. That's what I mean. It's like, can you imagine? Ugh. No, I can imagine. I can imagine that's fucking very rough, though. That's, yeah. It's. Could that's you imagine funny. being a fucking parent and finding this shit out? So I'm saying it makes you want to carve that motherfucker's face off. Yeah. Right, but it's just, you know. That's what I mean. That just not only does it destroy that child, it destroys the, it destroys the parents. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just fucking, it's just, just fucking nasty. Well, and honestly, like, I don't have, you know, I don't have children, but I've heard and I completely would agree with the fact that losing a child is like the worst thing that could ever happen. I only have a cat. We have a cat. If somebody <laughs> killed my we... cat, if somebody killed baby cookie like that, I would fucking kill you. Because I, I could I could imagine what it'd be like if it was a That's what a, I mean. A, and a, she's a not human. even a person. Yeah. But well, yeah, if human, somebody did something not a human person, you know what I mean? She's a cat person. But if but you if killed somebody... my cat, I would fucking kill you that's what i mean so i can imagine so like how much good. worse it would be yeah. for like a person that's that's and i'm not know, talking about an accident. Like human accidents child. happen but if you kill my cat on purpose i'd fucking kill you i just would i would too yeah i'm, I'm just telling you and right make now. sure nobody would find out <laughs> well i think i've I said this fuck. before i think like, a lot of people feel that way about their animals though well, like I, I said, I it's like, I, I, you know, it's like, I don't have a kid, but it's like, yeah. I, so I can imagine it would be that much worse. Because if somebody right, yeah. did that to my cat, I would oh, not man. only kill you, I would make a stew out of you yeah. and eat you. Damn, Jenny. Damn, damn. Jenny's going way up here. I no, would, I'm just saying. I, I don't would. think I'd eat that piece of shit. Although I could season the fuck out of that. It would be delicious. It would be yeah. delicious. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> You're funny. And I wouldn't feel bad about it You'd either. I'm just telling like, you right now. I'm just, uh, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to put it in perspective. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. Trying to see it from, from the parents' point of view, the fucking rage, I would feel. You yeah. Know what I mean, and, oh man, no, nah, I don't want to think about it. That's what I mean. I don't want like, to go down. I, that, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, you probably don't. Yeah. Because I can't, like I said, I I yeah. can't, I can't imagine I can, but I can't. You know what I'm saying? I can imagine I don't want to. Yeah, you I probably don't want to imagine. Know. Now, the weird thing about this, is that. About two weeks before the murders occurred, um, another counselor at Camp Scott had reported that someone had broken into her cabin and had stolen some stuff, including like some eyeglasses and a couple of other kind of like minor things. Now, another weird thing that happened at this time was that there had been, she had like a box of donuts and I guess it had donuts in it. But when she found the box, it was empty, like someone had taken all the donuts or eaten them. But they'd left a note in there. And the note said, now I've seen varying accounts of this. The note either said that four girls will be murdered at the camp over the summer or three girls will be. So someone was planning this. Now, as I said, this was two weeks before the murder. Now, so because you find a note like that in a fucking donut box in your cabin where someone's stolen your glasses and stuff, they didn't really take it all that seriously because they thought it was just a joke. So they didn't report it until later on. You know what I mean? Because they're just like, oh, okay, whatever. It's like somebody left a note in a fucking donut box and ate all my donuts. So they just, so she just threw the note away and didn't think any more about it. Now, Okay, so after the murder of these three little girls took place, um, it was kind of like a shit show because they sort of, yeah, they kind of got the area cordoned off around the bodies. But other than that, there was kind of like people tramping all over the camp. It's like, so, you know, it was really hard to like collect evidence because there was just people everywhere. And it was like a circus atmosphere as, you know, a lot of shit around then was. Um, Also, you know, it was the 1970s. It was 1977. So you didn't have like a lot of uh you know good forensic evidence like the dna evidence and uh all that other kind of stuff now they did find that in the tent like i said i'm calling it a tent but i've seen pictures of it and just the top of it was a tent the base part of it was like a wooden base and like a wooden floor with like a tent top over it so inside that um they found some bloody footprints uh that was like a military boot so they did find that do you know what size we're talking about um it was actually a little bit of a smaller size i think it was only a seven or eight 
Maybe or, or maybe a nine. It, it was just like it was it was That's a smaller man. size. For, it's a man, a man size. size. It was a man it's size, man. but okay. not a big. It wasn't like a big fucking. He wasn't a large intimidating. No, no, no. All right. Although um, that you could be talking about 13, 14 year old too, really. Yeah, but like I said, we'll I'll, I'll get into that. Okay, all right. So now, because there was blood found inside the tent, and this and this footprint was found inside the tent. They were assuming that the girls were first attacked inside the tent and then carried out because they were found about 150 yards outside of the tent, which means they must have been carried out of the tent after being attacked or at some point during the attack, Um, which I'll get into what I think that implies a little bit later. Um, They also found a flashlight uh, that had a fingerprint on the lens. Um, They found a crowbar. And they found some pieces of black duct tape and a long black hair. Now, there were a couple suspects they had in mind. Um, The first guy that they looked into was this guy named Jack Schroff. And he owned a ranch that wasn't far uh, from Camp Scott. Now, when they searched his home, they found uh, a roll of black duct tape. And they also found some rope which looked very much like the rope that had been used to bind two of the girl's wrists. Now, when they questioned him about the shit that they had found at his house, he said, well, what happened was that someone broke into his ranch and they stole a bunch of stuff, including rope and tape and some other things like that. And he's like, so I just bought these to like replace what this guy had stolen. Did he report it? Um, he may have, uh, but they did interview him. They interviewed him over the course of a couple of days. And he also had a a pretty airtight alibi for the time of the murder. So they thought that probably he hadn't done. He also took a polygraph and he passed it. So they... Because it sounds kind of like likely that the offender would probably steal some shit. So we're talking about kind of a vagrant. Or a or, yeah, you know, somebody who's transient. Well, I'm gonna get into that right okay. now. Okay, all right. So that was the first suspect that they had. He was he was cleared. He had an alibi. He passed a polygraph and whatnot. Now we're gonna talk about the most famous sus, the fam- most famous suspect in this case. And uh, like I said, I'm not coming down for or against because I wasn't there. I don't really know if he did it or not. Because some shit really sounds like he did it, and some shit not so much. The next suspect that they looked into was this guy named Gene Leroy Hart. Now, he was um, uh, a Cherokee and lived in the area. Um, His mom lived only about a mile away from Camp Scott, and he had had some past criminal convictions of some similar kind of crimes. Okay, it's starting to sound like they got somebody. Now, he had... um, Already done. Okay, so the first time that he was imprisoned, he had raped two pregnant... He kidnapped two pregnant women and tied them up, put tape over their faces, like all over their whole faces, um, raped them, then kind of took them out somewhere and dumped them and left them, like expecting that they would die, I suppose. But they didn't. Um, Actually, one of them escaped and went and got help, and so they both lived. Now, uh, Gene Leroy Hart was uh, captured for this, but he escaped. They put him in prison, but he escaped. Then um, he was in prison, then he gets out on parole at some point, and then he was uh, captured again for robbery. Now, he got another sentence for that, but then he escaped from jail again. And they couldn't find him for a really long time. And this was back in the early 70s, like 1972, 1973. As I said, the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders happened in 1977. So he was still like on the loose at this time. And uh, he was thought to live somewhere around that area where Camp Scott was in Oklahoma. Now, the interesting thing about this, like I said, he was a Cherokee. And so like a lot of people that lived in this, um, a lot of the Native, Native Americans that lived in this area of Cookson County Um, they knew him and like vouched for him, like what an awesome dude he was. Now, around the time of the murders or a couple days after it happened, there were these hunters and they were kind of, uh, you know, exploring in the area that was not far away from the camp. And they find this cave and this cave looks like somebody has been living in it. Inside the cave, they find, um, 
some photographs of women, which they think that Jean Leroy Hart might have had when he was in prison, like that were up on his wall or whatever. Um, they also found some uh, pairs of eyeglasses, which were similar to the ones that had been stolen from the counselor's uh, cabin at the at Camp Scott. And they also found like some old newspapers. Now it should be noted that the flashlight that was found at Camp Scott after the murder of the three Girl Scouts had um, some crumpled up newspaper like found in it or around it that was from the same day as that newspaper that they found in the cave. They also found in the cave um, this little note that said 77 6 17, June 17, 1977, although the date is reversed, uh, which isn't how an American would write it, which seems kind of weird. But it said that, and then it said, the real killer was here. Bye bye, fools. So that was found on the wall of the cave. Now, um, by the time they found this cave, they figured that Jean Leroy Hart had been living in this cave because they knew that that was like the pictures at least were his stuff, but they didn't know where he had gone subsequently. So then they find out from an informant that he's been staying with this other guy uh, who was named Pigeon and that was 50 miles uh, away from Camp Scott. So they go to Pigeon's house and uh, Jean Leroy Hart is indeed there. So allegedly they asked him, they're like, did you kill the three girls at the Girl Scout camp? And he says, quote, you'll never pin it on me. Hmm. According to the cops, that's what he said. And then after that, he says he's not gonna talk anymore. Now, weirdly, what happened with this whole thing was that it seemed like, and, and they went into this a little bit on the documentary that I was talking about earlier that had Johnny Cash narrating, <coughs> was that a lot of the people in the Cherokee community in the area at the time, like knew Gene Le Leroy Hart and thought that he was innocent and that he was being railroaded. And in fact, they said that a lot of the shit that was in the cave was planted by law enforcement. So I don't know if that's true or not. That's just saying what they what they said. They said that he was being railroaded by the cops and that he was really a great guy and that he would never have done such a thing, right? So there's that whole controversy. So it seemed like in the community, there was a lot of support for Gene Leroy Hart. And I remember like some of the um, parents of the little girls that were murdered were saying, you know, you'd go into a restaurant in the area at the time and there would be like a jar like raising money for Gene Leroy Hart's defense because they thought he was innocent. So they wanted like to help him out. There's something to be at the trial. There's something to be said for that. But you also have to remember that there were some pretty damn charismatic serial killers in the past. True. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, they weren't all fuck ups. I mean, what's his name? Uh, damn. Yeah, I'm talking about Who, the, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was, you know, persuasive. Yeah. Hmm. That's why I said it's like so. It's I'm, inconclusive. I yeah, mean, I'm not coming down on one side or the other right. because, I mean, according to Pigeon, the guy he was staying with, he said that they searched his house one time and didn't find anything, and then they came back and searched it again, and suddenly they found all this stuff that seemed like incriminating. And he's saying that they planted it, that the cops planted it there to make Gene Lee Rohan. Cops look... have planted stuff, though. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. To, to make him look guilty. Now, I'm not saying because, I mean, Hart had been convicted in the past of rape and attempted murder. So, you know, th there comes a point where it's like, you know, how much of it could be railroaded, how much of it is. You know what I'm saying? Just because a guy tries to kill somebody else and rapes some woman doesn't necessarily mean he's going to go after a bunch of little girls in the damn sleeping bag. True. That's a different kind of fucking thing. But it doesn't mean he's doesn't not going to do it's that It doesn't mean he did It's inconclusive. Either. And like I said, I should note that he's pretty much the only, the prime suspect. I mean, they never found anyone else that was... That doesn't mean much either. No, though. I know. I'm just saying. I'm, like I said, I'm not coming down one, one way or the other because yeah. I don't know. I wasn't there. There has to be conclusive proof there's got to be proof yeah in this is... but it but you know after the shit they found in pigeon's house and the shit they found in the cave um he was actually arrested and placed on trial 
in spring of 1979. As I said, um, there was in the community, there was a, like a, a large feeling that he was probably innocent. And it, it got so bad that when the little girl's parents like came into court, they apparently needed like protective escorts because the community was so dead set. They thought that Hart was being right. railroaded. And so they were taking it out on these poor little girls, these little murdered girls' parents, yeah. which is kind of shitty, too. I mean, even if the guy was innocent, that's still shitty. It's not their fault. So, yeah. Now, some of the evidence they presented at the trial, which seemed to, you know, point away from Gene Leroy Hart. Okay, they said, so they found the bloody footprint in the tent. But Hart apparently wore a size 11 shoe. And the footprints found in the tent were much smaller than that. Only about eight or a nine, something like that. So too small to be his feet. They also said that the fingerprint that was left on the lens of the flashlight that they found at the site was not Hart's fingerprint. Um, also said that they had taken some, um, you know, kind of swabs like, you know, they couldn't really do DNA back then, but, you know, blood typing, all that type of stuff. They said that was kind of inconclusive, could have mar could have matched Hart, but could have maybe not, could have been somebody else. That footprint, that footprint is, or you know, that shoe print, Yeah. that's important. I don't think it was that dude. Well, now some have speculated that it might be more than one person and that he might have been one of the people. What's the chances of getting two people to agree to go out and rape a bunch of little girls? Well, girl? on the other hand, though, uh, it would be much easier for two guys to control three little girls. Because keep in mind, they attacked them in the tent and then carried them quite a long way down the path. Which uh, you don't would know what seem he like it would be he, easier if it you was... Don't, you don't know what he told those little girls. I'm sure, True. I'm sure that some pretty strong language from an intimidating person person could fucking control three girl little girls yeah i got a feeling that i don't know i've got a feeling that this might have been fucking an older teenager that did this that's it's just possible. that's just that's just my and it's somebody that they never would have suspected and it's probably his only crime that's what i'm thinking it could be yeah it was but as i somebody said somebody who they... was a relative of one of the fucking um counselors who knew that it was going to go on this is, you know, I'm just surmising. Yeah. So I wouldn't know, but it sounds like it was something kind of like a son or a cousin or a brother of one of the counselors knew that all this shit was going to go on. New security wasn't that good. Well, it this. would seem to be that somebody, I mean, I don't know if the note that was found in the donut box two weeks before this, I mean, it would seem to be related because it specifically made a threat against well, three girls or four girls at the camp. And whoever it was probably knew the layout of the camp because they knew to target tent number eight, which was the only one that the counselors couldn't see from their tent. Well, this is a high-profile crime, so I'm sure there's a lot of people running around. You know, there might have been kids running around trying to add evidence to this. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm the killer. I was here. You know, they, 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 I don't know. I'm just saying. I just think it's weak. I think, it, I think it's weak evidence. I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, okay, so the hair... They need to get DNA and fucking yeah, make a I DNA mean, match. The That's... hair that they found, um, there was long black hair, which actually did look like Hart's hair, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean it was his hair. I mean, they said, the oh, it was a Native print, American man, but... If the shoe print was smaller than his, I just... I don't know. It's somebody who they don't didn't suspect. That's what I'm saying. Maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. But in any case, if Hart did it or not, I mean, he was actually acquitted. Uh, they said, you know, the jury uh, only deliberated for six hours. Right. And they came back and said there was insufficient evidence. They didn't uh, think he had done it. So there, the possibility remains that, one, he didn't do it. Uh, two, that he did do it, but he had an accomplice who had smaller feet than him. Um, you know, other things. I just that. find that unlikely. Although I have to say that if, even if he did do it, he didn't get away with it because um, you have to remember that he had escaped from jail for other charges yeah. 
prior to this. Right. So after they had him in custody, even though he was acquitted of the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders, he was actually taken back to prison for the, all the other shit he did. Right. Um, and he had like a 300-year sentence or something like that because <laughs> of all the other shit he did. So they put him back in jail. Well, he would have been a likely suspect because, you know, he was a bad dude. But yeah. I just don't think he did this one. Maybe not. It's almost. It looks like. It looks like to me that the cops were trying to wash their hands of this. And they said, "Well, it must have been this guy." Yeah. You know well, I mean, I mean but that's the kind of evidence, thing. The it could have been evidence. him, but he might have just been a the convenient phys- scapegoat because he was kind of a shithead, right? And who had done similar things. But the physical evidence didn't match the fingerprint and the footprint, and I just, and that doesn't sound like his mo. Yeah, maybe not. But you know, who knows? That's what I mean. Who knows? He did. He had like raped some pregnant chicks before, so and done some other shit like that. But as the I said, is, though, so that, the kind of guys that rape adult women tend not to be after little kids, though. You know, that's just it does. Yeah, I'm. I'm like, I'm not denying that there's some. There can be some crossover, but yeah, I mean, generally... Yeah, there is some, but in general... Generally, you're either not, a rapist of adult women or, or you're, you're a like a pedophile. Of, right, exactly. Yeah. It's usually two different it's uh, not, psychological profiles. Well, exactly. It's not usually the same kind of guy. There is some crossover, but it's not really that common. Yeah. Um. So I think it's unlikely that it was him, and that's why he was acquitted of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, they just thought there wasn't enough evidence, and there was too much yeah, evidence, evidence that was maybe pointing towards someone else. You like I said, you whether gotta go by the evidence, yeah, like whether yeah. it was him and another guy, and like that was the other guy's, you know, physical evidence. Nobody knows. I'm going to say that there's a very good chance that there's another person out there that they never suspected that did this. Isn't that yeah? That's like you know, kind of scary. Yeah, and I'm thinking that it was probably somebody in their late teens. That's just what I'm thinking. Yeah, it could be. And now he, and he was a, he was a young pedophile type serial killer. Yeah. And for some reason he did this, and he got it out of his system and was never captured again because he didn't. Really or fed. he went somewhere else. Or he and went did somewhere it, and else. And it was never and got linked him. back to this. Well, a lot of times, you know, the cases, you know how they are. We've you've researched a lot of these. A lot of times, yeah. once a guy's caught, he starts spilling his guts and says, "Yeah, I killed those girls," and they, you know, because you know they they want the fame. But it could have been that he offended somewhere else and was never yeah. captured. I kind of feel like, particularly in the 70s, I feel like that happened a lot because... They were so unorganized there were so, Well, yeah, they, were so, they didn't have computers. There no. were, like, so many. Like, I've written about a lot of cases where, you know, something happened in, say, like, Tennessee, and then, like, a couple months later, something happened in, you know, Pennsylvania or something like that, and they didn't really link them until later, like, many years later, right. somebody was, like, researching the cases, like, hey, these sound kind of similar. Maybe that was the same guy. Um, you know, but they can't really prove it at that point because it was the 1970s and all the evidence has been degraded or whatever. I'm hiccuping like crazy. Yeah, I see that. So, um, yeah, so as I said, uh, Hart still had like 305 years left on his sentence from all the other bad shit that he did. So even though he was acquitted of the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders, he was still taken back to prison to serve the rest of his sentence for the other charges. And two months after he was taken back to jail, he died of a heart attack. He was only 35 years old. Damn, how do you die of a heart attack at 35? You must be doing some serious cocaine. Or, you know, or some people some deep, people get unlucky, defect. or he yeah. had a genetic defect, or he right. was under a lot of stress. I don't really know. But yeah, he died at 35 Weird. in jail. So he didn't even, like, serve any of that sentence. Right. So, all right. So after that happened... Like, a lot of the families of the murdered girls, like, tried to sue various people. They tried to sue um, the owners of the camp, like, saying that it was negligent because you couldn't see the tent and stuff like that, although they ended up uh, losing. Um, They've also tried to... They're trying to do some DNA on this case and finally get it solved. Um, They really haven't been able to get anything out of it, though. It's like, I, I feel like... In uh, in 2017, they were able to raise about $30,000 and they were going to do like all this DNA testing, but I don't know if anything has ever actually come of that. Um, but they do want to solve this case because what the fuck? Somebody just walks into a Girl Scout camp right, and, and takes three, yeah. three little girls yeah. out of a tent and just like 
rapes and kills them either in the tent or takes or carries them out of the tent in their fucking sleeping bags. Yeah. Like I said, two of them were raped, one raped and sodomized, as far as I remember. Like, that's what most of the sources said. And what the fuck? And they just, like, left them, like, by the path that was going to the showers. And other than Hart, there have been no suspects in this case. So they have no idea who might have done this. No idea whatsoever. And like I said, they raised some money. They're going to do DNA testing, but I don't know if anything has come of that, if they've got a profile, because like I said, it was a long time ago and the DNA might have been degraded at this point. But it has so far never been solved. Still officially an unsolved murder. That was bizarre that you could uh, do some shit like that back in the 70s and get away with it. That's fucking horrifying. Yeah. I, just, I just feel like, like I said, man, yeah. fucking 60s and 70s, not the good old days. Yeah. Well, even the fucking, even when people talk about the good old days, like back in the fucking 40s. There wasn't a good old days. There's never been a good old days. No. It was, it's always sucked. They were always Just, bad. It's always bad. Yeah. In fact, if anything, it's better now it's better, than it yeah. was. All these crybabies today talking about, oh, how, how hard, how hard it is now. Fuck no. It was terrible. It was bad back in the 80s. Internet, had, internet and computers have changed everything. Yeah. We saw the change happen. Well, I told you, as as yeah. much as like I like some things from the 80s, I wouldn't go back. Fuck no. 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 Fuck no. There were certain things that were good about it. Uh, yeah, there are certain things that's good about every era. And it had to do with the culture and the movies and shit. Certain things Yeah, were, that was fun. About. But, but uh, everything no. else, it was like, when you think about it now, it's like everything yeah. was so hard like compared yeah. to now. Yeah. It's like everything's so easy. Right. It's just finding cool clothes, fucking it's funny difficult. To think about. Fucking finding out information, fucking ne- you know what I mean. We were actually kind of dumb in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, n- not dumb in terms in terms of like lack of intelligence. It was lack of information. Yeah. You couldn't find things out. Yeah. You know, just no internet. That's what internet I mean. Has changed it's a lot so of so much easier nowadays. So much easier. I now. would never go back. Yeah. So I'm just saying to all the young people out there, yeah, don't, I, I don't ever, like, romanticize. Like, there was a lot of cool shit about the 80s. I love the music. Yeah. I love the movies. I love all that shit. But I wouldn't go back and live there. No, I listen to these young whippersnappers on what they call the social media. Crying. <laughs> uh, crying about shit. Man, those bitches are fucking soft as fuck. They don't know what it was like back then. They got it made. Well, and, and in the 80s and 70s God, and 80s, we were soft man. compared to fucking yeah. before they even had electric. Because you yeah. get a, like old people go, man, we didn't have electricity. Yeah. I didn't even have I walked 14 miles to go to exactly. school. Exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. like my grandma used to say. Yeah. So I walked 14 miles to school back, barefoot in the snow, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and they weren't really lying. A lot of them were like that. A lot of them did, yeah. Yeah, they did have, they did have yeah. a lot of rougher. So, like I said, I, I try yeah, not to the, complain about Yeah, the speed of like life was very slow back then compared how'd you get anything done how did anybody yeah. get anything done i don't understand it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you gonna be all right i'm gonna be all right are I you gonna no- i need another drink though all right well we're gonna take a break right now how long have we been doing this for i don't know okay what's the time an hour and seven minutes damn this is gonna be a long show that's all right people love that shit they love those long two-hour shows yeah Okay. Well, we went off on a lot of digressions. Well, you went off on a lot that's of digressions. That's how I'm coming, man. Yeah. We t- I knew we were going to go off on a digression about Girl Scout cookies. I had a feeling that's that coming, was going to happen. I'm still thinking about them things. I know. Go ahead. For a long time, we had some Thin Mints frozen in the fucking freezer, and I totally forgot about them, which yeah. is crazy, but then I found them a couple yeah. months ago, and I'm like, oh, I'm eating this whole sleeve. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a break right now, and when we come back, we will talk about yet another. This was actually an earlier murder of a girl scout this happened in tennessee rather than oklahoma this was the murder of marcia trimble so we were going to talk about that when we come back we'll be back in just a minute the faceless villain a collection of the eeriest unsolved murders of the 20th century volume 2 includes cases spanning the years from 1960 through 1979 featuring such infamous crimes as the triple homicide at lake bodum the family massacre known as the good heart murders the serial killings of the Zodiac, Bible John, Jack the Stripper, and the Freeway Phantom. The slaughter of dozens of women and girls along the Highway of Tears and the Texas Killing Fields. And the mysterious death of suspected spy, the Isdal Woman, along with dozens of other fascinating and horrifying accounts. Buy it now from Amazon in print, Kindle, or audiobook format. Hi, baby cookie. What are you doing? Yeah. Oh my goodness. 
What a cutie pie you are. What's up? Look at this it's belly. Like, you want to get rid of pedal away. <laughs> get rid of pedal away on a bicycle. Yeah. On the back. Aww. I can't understand this shit. You are so cute. You Look at your little face. She's like, what was it been looking She's for? She's getting ready to astrally project. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> getting ready to leave your body, huh? Yeah. You Is that what you're doing, baby What's cookie? What's up with the feet? What's up with the feet? She's like, oh, what? Stop oh, fucking oh, with my feet, feet daddy. She's like, I was all relaxed and shit, and you were That's fucking it up. Well, <laughs> 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 oh, look at you. Look at you. Yeah. All right. That's cool. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> oh, look, Cookie's on the show. Yeah, that was part two. I made the cookie right here with her. Yeah, she wanted to come in and see what we were doing in here. <laughs> Look at that little face. Sorry if you're just listening to the audio version. You can't see our adorable little kitty. Yeah. Because she is, like, looking right in the camera with her little she's sweet little face. Out. She's like, okay, put she's me like, down. I've had enough. <laughs> okay, so part two. Down. All right, so part two of the show. We are going to be talking about yet another murder of a Girl Scout. This actually happened in Tennessee in 1975. This is the case of Marsha Trimble. Marsha Trimble was 10 years old, nine years old rather. So she lives in this place called Green Hills. Uh, and it was like, it's like kind of an affluent suburb or it was at the time of Nashville, Tennessee. Now, Greenville? Uh, Green Hills. Green Hills. It was a neighborhood. Yeah, they used to live in Tennessee and it was in the 101st down in Clarksville. And I don't, I don't remember this neighborhood. Yeah, it's a yeah. part of it's a part of Nashville. Nashville, okay. I used to like my used to go down there. My dad's people are from Tennessee. Okay. Springfield, right. actually. Um, okay, so this happens uh, late February 1975. Now it's about five in the afternoon. And Marsha's at home. Uh, she has a mom. Her mom's a kindergarten teacher. Um, and, uh, her dad is also home. He, sh uh, she also has a brother named Chuck and he is out in the driveway playing, uh, basketball with their neighbor, whose name is, uh, March. Now their mom, Virginia is making dinner. Um, and Marcia says, I'm going to go across the street because she had got her Girl Scout cookie shipment in that day. And some of the neighbors had ordered cookies from her. Yeah, I knew Girl Scout cookies. So, yeah, well, I told you, you can't talk about Girl Scouts without oh, talking about Girl oh, Scout cookies. Okay. You know what I mean? We know, well, I we know how we coming. feel about Thin Mints, yeah. yeah. So she had just got her shipment of Girl Scout because she, so she was going to go deliver them. So she said, well, I'm going to just go across the street for a second and, um, you know, give our neighbor the cookies that she ordered. So uh, their neighbor's name was Marie Maxwell. So at some time between uh, 515 and 525, Marcia goes um, out the back door and she's uh, seen in the driveway. She's just like a little bitty girl. She has a cardboard box in her hand that had all her Girl Scout cookie boxes in it. She had about uh, $20 in an envelope. That was money that she had uh, from people that had bought Girl Scout cookies. So she goes, um, Marie Maxwell, whose house she was going to, lived right across the street. So Marsha's going over to deliver the cookies. Now, Marie Maxwell had just come home from the grocery store, so she pulls into the driveway. Now, she starts taking groceries out of the car. Now, she sees through the bushes, like on the side of her house, presumably, she says that she sees Marsha and that she was in the driveway of the neighboring house and she was talking to two people, one bigger than her and one smaller than her. Now, consider that Marsha was only nine years old and she was only about four foot ten. So this is going to be like a little kid and maybe a slightly older kid so that she was talking to. Now, she thought that the smaller kid was probably their neighbor and a friend of hers whose name was March. He was about ten years old. Um, now, the taller kid, she wasn't really sure who it is. But she thought it might have been one of their other neighbors whose name was Jeffrey Womack, which will, you know, come into play later on. Womack. Yeah. That's my grandmother's name in the South. Is it? Her last name. Maybe they're Womack. related. Catherine Womack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 
Now, at this point, um, Marie, she sees, she's like, I only saw the little girl, like, she only saw Marsha from the back, but she's like, I saw kind of the side of her face, and I recognized that it was her, so she's like, so I went inside the house, and I wrote her a check for the cookies, because I figured that she was coming over to deliver the cookies, because she saw the cookie box in her hand, um, so she goes inside to write, write a check, but then Marsha never comes over. Now... At this point, they're not really sure where the little girl went. About a half hour later, somebody said that they saw a girl that might have been her, and they saw her at the corner of these two streets called Estes and Hobbs. This was about three-tenths of a mile from where she was last seen, which was like her neighbor. I think it was like a, it was the house across from her, but one over. Um, so this was about three-tenths of a mile from there. Like somebody saw her there. Um, but she didn't have the box full of cookies. Now, another witness also saw her about five minutes after that. This was about 5.35 p.m. And saw her farther up the street. And she was walking down the street um, on Hobb Street. And she was walking toward uh, like a tree nursery that was down there. Now, this person also said that she didn't have her cookie box with her. And that she looked kind of confused. So... At this point, like, later speculation was that maybe someone had taken her cookie box, like, it had stolen it, and that she was, like, chase like, maybe a kid took it, like, as a joke, and so she was, like, chasing after them, but they're not really sure. Now, at this stage, uh, between about 5.30 and 6, uh, Jeffrey Rom Womack, who is the person that, who's kind of a neighbor of theirs, who the neighbor said that she saw... Marsha may be talking to him, but she wasn't sure if it was him or not. Now, he comes into the house of a woman named Peggy Morgan, and uh, that was his next-door neighbor. Peggy Morgan ran a daycare center, like, it, out of her house. And uh, Jeffrey Womack, like I said, this, this guy will be important later on, um, he often came over. He was only 15 at the time. He often came over to kind of help her babysit the kids and stuff. So he comes over. Peggy says that he's kind of like sweaty looking. He looks like he's been running around or he's all sweaty. Um, he says he's just been playing basketball. So no one thinks any more about that. Now at this stage, back at the Trimble house, uh, they have be started to become concerned that Marsha has not come home yet because she said she was just popping over to the neighbor's house across the street to deliver the cookies and get the money for the cookies that the, that the woman had ordered. So her mom, Virginia, like goes out and starts calling for her and she's not there. So, um, so they start, so they actually call the cops and the cop says, well, why don't you like, before you like report her missing, like, you know, officially or anything, let's drive around the neighborhood and we'll look for her. So they start looking around, uh, the neighborhood, start driving around, but they don't find her. So then, um, you know, all of the cops start kind of converging at the house. Now keep in mind that this is a pretty affluent neighborhood. Um, this is not something that happens there a lot. And even initially, the cops were not alarmed. I mean, they thought, well, maybe she just wandered off and she lost track of time or, you know, she's just running away because she had a fight with her parents or something. Like, no one is thinking that she's been kidnapped and murdered at this stage. Uh, this is not something that happened in this neighborhood in 1975. So they weren't even really thinking about that. Or they think maybe she's been in an accident. Maybe she's been hit by a car or something of that nature. So no one was thinking anything really terrible at this stage. So they call all the cops out. They get the helicopters. They get the dogs. They get everything like that. Hmm. Now, um, yeah, so... So let me back up. Okay. Let's run through this. Let's run through this again. She was seen talking to somebody, a taller person and a shorter person. She had her box of cookies with yes. her. Yes. And then later on, she's seen, some, seen by somebody else... She doesn't have the box she's, of cookies. She was seen by two other separate people. That, and she doesn't have the box of cookies. Right. And she looks confused. Yeah. That's weird. So that yeah. means, that's telling me, that some, somehow she lost that box of cookies. Yeah. After talking to those people. Yeah. What do you make of that, Jen? I'm not really sure about that because... In light of what they find out, of what they found out later, I'm not really sure what the timeline of the situation is, because, all right, and I'm going to get a little spoiler alert here because for a lot of, uh, for many years, 
Um, it was speculated that Marsha had been kidnapped and killed by someone she knew, like a teenager that lived in the neighborhood, perhaps Jeffrey Womack. Um, they, that they had taken her cookies or they had like lured her somewhere and like did horrible things to her. But as it turned out later, that probably wasn't the case. So these sightings of her, like first she's seen talking to her two friends in the neighboring driveway and she had her cookies, but then later two other witnesses said, yeah, we saw her walking down the street and she didn't have her cookies. So I'm not really sure like what happened like in the interim. It's it's really hard for me to like How imagine many the scenario. Did she have? Oh, I don't know. Well, they maybe said it she was just, just sold her cookies. Maybe. Well, they said it was a, she had a cardboard box, and I'm just, like I don't know. I used to be in the Girl Scouts though, yeah. And like when you you know went around and you sold your cookies to yeah. you know your mom's friends at work or whatever, mm-hmm. and then they would send you the shipment, and all your cookies were like in a big cardboard box, like from right. Amazon or something. And then you would take those and you would like distribute them to like the people that had bought them from your little list or whatever. So I'm assuming that that's what it was. I'm assuming that it was like a large card- cardboard box with a bunch of boxes of because she was going to deliver cookies. That's what she was doing. Right. And she was getting she was gathering money. So could it have been that her cookies weren't taken, but she sold them all? Uh, somebody bought them. Like I'll buy them all. I'm not really sure because, like okay. I said, normally what you would do. Like I said, I used to be in Girl Scouts. I don't right. know if it, you know, and I'm assuming this was a little bit before my time. This was 1975. I was in the Girl Scouts probably in the late 70s or early 80s. But um, it was the same kind of thing. You just, you didn't get any cookies at first. Okay. You just got the list. Okay. And you went around and everybody's like, who wants cookies? And then you wrote their so name you down. you pre-ordered the cookies. And then you pre-ordered them. Okay. And then you Either they gave the you cookies. money or they said, I'll give you money when the cookies come. You know, it's COD or whatever. And right. then, you know, so she, what she was doing was she was, she had some money and she was delivering the cookies to the people that had already paid her. Yeah. And then she had cookies that people said they were going to pay her for later and she was going to deliver them. Let me get back into this though. Okay. How much are those cookies? What, then or now? Yeah, yeah, now. How much are they now? When was the last time we bought a box of them? We had some cookies. They're f- maybe maybe 550, maybe 650 for a one box. I think so. Yeah. Oh, so they're not cheap. No, they're not cheap. Well, but, okay. but like I said, it's you know, it's it's to raise money for Girl Scouts, right? So I, don't, I don't mind paying a little bit more I have to buy them goddamn cookies, man. The thin mints and those damn coconut cookies. What do they call them? Kunas, Makunas, what you call them? Samoas, Samoans, yeah, Samoas, uh, Samoas. They're the Hawaiian cookies, yeah, yeah, like from the island of Samoa. If coconut. you're not if you're not in the United States, the Girl Scouts yeah. at a particular time of year, it's usually it's usually like late winter or spring, and they um, they're in, in the malls, they're in front of grocery stores, in front of like Home Depot. Yeah. And they set up a little table with other little moms and whatnot. If you're not an American, you're not around these good. These cookies are badass. They're, I'm not sure what it is about them. They're it's like, very good. <laughs> Those Samoas are fucking thick too. They're like. Um, from what I remember, a half inch thick. Yeah. And they're tall, thick cookies. I just love them, man. They are very I mean, good. Yeah, they make me hungry. I know. Now you're making me. They kind of. They're kind of like Keebler. They're kind of like something minutes. that you get from Keebler. Yeah. But they're just they're just better. I don't know why. Well, because you paid a lot more for them. I guess in the in the peanut butter chocolate covered ones, man. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember what those are called. So, they all have like cute little names, but I can't yeah, remember what God. they are. They're round. They had, they yeah, I know bu- what you're talking about. They had a little bubble of peanut butter on And like I said, I used to be in Girl Scouts. And then they cover the whole shit with was... fucking chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's... They are really good. Girl Scouts know what they're doing. <laughs> trying to sell the Girl Scouts didn't make them. So, well, they're, they subbed them out. Yeah. But, okay, so, there's no way of really knowing what happened to those cookies or what happened to that girl before she disappeared. Yeah, now... That's um, what they're saying, right? Yeah, well, they know what happened to a few of the cookies, but I'm not going to Oh, spoil that's that, a yeah. spoiler? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, one thing... Because that's I, a clue. If you could find out what happened yeah. to those cookies, then you know. One thing I will note is that this is kind of an interesting little right. uh, detail, was that um, at this point, you know, they, they assume that the child has gone missing or been abducted or has had something happen to her. So they had a uh, reporter from a local uh, news agency like come to talk to the family about the case. That reporter 
was Oprah Winfrey. This was actually before she got really famous. So Oprah was on this case. Yes. Go but the, this was before she was famous. She was still working for a local uh, channel in Tennessee. Yeah. And she actually came to the house to like to interview the parents, but they told her that they were too upset and they didn't want to talk to her. Right. So um, they told her to go away and she did. So there was that whole thing. Um, okay. So now the cops come... The, the cops have started interviewing, like, some of the uh, kids in the neighborhood about where Marsha might have gone. Now, according to him, some of them said, well, oh, don't worry about her. Um, she's with Jeffrey, Jeffrey Womack. Um, Jeffrey Womack apparently had also, even though he's only 15, he had actually bought some cookies from her, too. And he had said later that he was like, oh, well... Um, she was going to bring me the cookies, but I didn't have the money. So I had to go back to my house and all this other kind of stuff. So some of the neighborhood kids said that she was with Jeffrey and not to worry about her. So after the kids said that the cops were like, well, maybe we should go check out this Jeffrey Womack kid. Um, so they all go to his house, but he's not home. Now around, uh, nine, nine 30 in the evening, um, Jeffrey apparently finds out that the cops are looking for him. So they act, so he actually goes to the Trimble house where all the cops have kind of set up a little impromptu, you know, kind of investigation room or whatever in What's the Trimble CP house. Command yeah, post. They yeah. set it up there. So he actually goes to the house and, um, he says, well, I was out looking for her because I heard that she was missing. Um, so I was at this quarry and, so they start asking him about what had happened. Now, at the time, they didn't really consider him a suspect. Now, they did ask him to turn out his pockets. Um, what was in his pockets, which doesn't seem all that suspicious. They found $5. They found a roll of pennies. They also found an unused condom, which they thought later was like, Oh, well, maybe that had something to do with something. But, you know, he was 15. It's like, you know, he has a fucking condom. I used to do that pocket. shit too, man. That's what I mean. That's... I carried that shit around until it fell apart. That's <laughs> just, just, just like wore in, out in a Just like Kanicki yeah. in Greece. Yeah, just, 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 just <laughs> I've had this since I was in the seventh yeah, grade. Fucking... Yeah, that just, I don't know why that thought of that. Yeah, but then all of a sudden the dam breaks. Yeah. Right <laughs> around, right around 11th grade, you know what I mean? And then it's just full spectrum. You know what I'm talking about? You can't stop it. Full spectrum. It's just like full spectrum. I'm not going to talk you, about you it. You said it, not me. It's just, it's like coming, <laughs> I'm not even going to speculate. It's coming from every might, direction. What you might mean by that. Full spectrum is just too much of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. There <laughs> that, is, that's how it was for me. Yeah. But I was in Brazil at that time. You know what I'm talking about? Also, yeah. you're a boy. I'm a boy. Yeah. I was a boy back then. It was different. <laughs> it was different. It was fucking hilarious, though. Yeah. It was funny, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It's like, I kind of feel like. And, you know, I write about a lot of these true crime cases and some of the shit that they say, it's like, they're like, well, the first thing that made us suspect this person was X, Y, and Z, but you have to think of it as like, if no one had gotten murdered, would anybody think X, Y, and Z was weird? So I'm thinking a 15 year old boy with an unused condom in his pocket, yeah, weird. if no one got murdered, would anyone think that was weird? No. no. That's what I mean. No one would think that was weird. They're only thinking that. And also they were like, oh, well, on his sneakers, he had written like, fuck you, like on the toes. Oh, and I'm shit. like, big deal. That. I did that too. I, that. I did that too when I was a teenager. I had a pair of fucking jeans really and damn tiger that... stripes going up the top that's, of them. That's really not that weird. All in ink pen while I was fucking bored in class. Yeah. Yeah. I was all, like, do other cops think of that? Like, it, like if no one had got murdered, wouldn't anyone think this was weird? Because I think some things only seem weird because someone got murdered. But, like, if yeah. no one got murdered, no one would think that was weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I maybe feel like that's what happened in this kid's case. But I'm not entirely sure. So Jeffrey Womack is getting interviewed by the cops at the Trimble house. Now, then Peggy Morgan, who was a neighbor of Jeffrey Womack, she was the one, remember, that owned the daycare that Jeffrey Womack sometimes worked at. Now, she was um, older than him. She was, like, in her 30s. She comes into the Trimble house, and she says to the cops, Jeffrey didn't do anything. He was with me. Which they thought was a little weird because, you know, no one had How would she know the time of death? Yeah, well, yeah and it's like no one had necessarily accused him of anything. I mean, right. you know what I mean? 
So they thought that was a little strange. I'm that already they were... embarrassed about all this though because the... <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I'm fucking I'm related to Clan Womack. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I got some Womack blood in me. I can't understand it. If this motherfucker is a murderer, I'm gonna have to track him down. I honestly it's doubt. Gonna be, it's gonna I be honestly justice. doubt that he had anything okay. to do with this. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll I see. mean, seriously. He was we'll a 15 see. year old kid at this time. We'll see. We'll see. He, he, I, I honestly don't think he I hope he's a good boy. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there I will again. Slap that motherfucker. I was slapping. But I don't think he had anything okay. to do with it. Okay. So, all right. So, Peggy Morgan, this older woman, comes over and says he didn't have anything to do with it. So, um, they later found out, though, that Jeffrey hadn't actually been with her. He had actually been at her house because, like I said, he helped out with her daycare. <laughs> so he'd been over there watching the kids while she was out doing something else. She was running errands or going bowling or whatever it was she was doing. So they hadn't actually been together, but she had, but he had been at her house. Now, at this stage, um, Jeffrey's parents thought that the cops were being a little too, like, overbearing and were trying to, like, get him to admit to something and they didn't think he'd done anything. So they hired um, a lawyer for him, which I think maybe made the cops think that they had something to hide. But the parents said, you know, well, we were just, like, protecting our interests and we didn't think, you know, our kid did anything. So we decided we would hire a lawyer just for our own protection. So there was that whole thing, too. Now, they polygraphed Jeffrey Womack, I believe, two times at least. And he passed both times. And told several, he's all right. I told several he's of the investigators... Now, like I said, there's still some controversy, though. Okay. Like, several of the investigators thought that he was being truthful. They thought... They asked him, did, did you know anything about what happened with Marsha Trimble? Did you hurt her? And he said no. And it looked like he was telling the truth. So, you know, t make of that what you will. Um, now, it should be noted, too, that... Uh, okay, so, so they're still searching for this little girl... Um, they pretty much pulled out all the stops. They had all the you know, dogs, helicopters, the whole fucking deal and everything like that. They said, uh, the cops, one of the cops, uh, I remember this quote, it said something, something like it, you know, it was such a carnival atmosphere. He's like, you, you kept looking around expecting to see a Ferris wheel because there was just fucking reporters and shit like all over the fucking, uh, Trimble's, uh, yard. So, you know, as I said, this, this whole search is going on now to make a long story short, it was 33 days before they found Marsha Trimble's body. Now where they found her was in, it was like kind of a dilapidated shed. It was like made of wood and it had like windows, but it didn't have any glass in them. It was only about 150, 200 yards from her parents' house. Damn, now, well, shit, fuck, didn't they check that? Well, here's the thing. There is some controversy about that, too, because there's a contingent of cops that insist that they searched that shed during this, which they probably would have, because... Yeah, that's pretty damn close. There was a massive search going on, and that they didn't find her body at the time. As if she's put there after. But forensic evidence would seem to suggest that she had been there the whole time. So there's kind of like, you know. So could the cops have blown it off and lied about it? Perhaps. Doing that's what I mean. I'm, you know, I'm not really sure uh, how that's going to go. But yeah. So how she was found was, uh, this happened, uh, it was March 30th of 1975, 1976, whatever it was. Um, it was 33 days. Yeah. So it was 1975. So there's this guy uh, named Harry Moffat. And he is looking through this shed. He was looking for um, a cover for his boat engine. Now, the house where the shed was attached to, it wasn't his, but it belonged to his relatives who were the Thorpes. So he's looking for the boat engine thing, and he goes in this shed, and he sees these legs, like, sticking out from under a bunch of, like, this pile of rubble or whatever. Now, at first he thought it was a doll, but he started poking it with a stick, and then he thought maybe it was really a body, so he called the police. Now, like I said, when the police got there, some of them were like, hey, we checked this shit. There was no body in here back then. And, you know, so there was a whole controversy about that. This was, um, actually, I should note that it was Easter Sunday of that year when the body was found. 
Now, there's a, there, there's a chance that that could be right. Could be that somebody had custody possible. of that girl it's and possible. was holding her. They were searching for her. They searched that place. She wasn't in there. But then later he went back and put her in there and killed her. Yeah. And then, you know, there's a possibility. There was some... Suggest- there, the search was fucking half ass and they didn't see the fucking... I'm monster. kind of leaning more toward that because, right. okay, the forensic evidence... Okay, for one thing, they said they found dirt on her um, shoes... But all the dirt was on the soles, which would lead them to believe that she had walked into the garage rather than being dragged into the garage. Because if she had been dragged, the dirt would be on the back of the shoes or on the front of the shoes Mm. and not on the bottom of the shoes. So it looked like she had walked in there voluntarily. Also, um, maybe under duress. Well, that too. Um, But that she was still alive when she went in there. Um, Also, they said that because of, you know how they do um, the entomology or the the insect, you know, the insect generations or whatever. Oh, so Yeah, they said that from... Maggots? Yeah, from the insect, uh, you know, activity on the body, it looked as though the body had been in there for the entire 33 days, meaning that she had been killed shortly after she had disappeared. Yeah, and that she had been or, in the garage the whole time. But a one or two day, you know, uh, yeah, true. leeway point there, you know, we'll see. You know. True, but like I said, I'm not sure when, because like I said, it was a lot, it was more than a month between the time she disappeared and between the time they found her body. So they had done several searches of the area and this shed, like I said, was only 150, 200 yards from her house. Yeah, some people and can't imagine that. And cops said that they could that they had searched it before and that there was nothing in there. Two hundred yards, man. That's less than a rifle shot. I mean, that's close. Yeah, that is very close. That's close. It was like a neighbor's house. Yeah. And it was like a shed behind the neighbor's house. The Thorps yeah. were like their neighbors. It was either like behind their house or like it was a down a block that's or something odd. like that. That's very. That's odd. what I mean. So it seems strange that they had searched the area so thoroughly but hadn't found it. And then later on, it was found. So there, like I said, there's still some controversy about whether I the body was there. I got a feeling that maybe the time. cops look and popped their head in there and went, "Hey, you in here?" And then now that she's not here, and then she's and not. They walked yeah. out. Well, I, you know, I, I feel like, here's the thing: whenever humans are involved, there's error. There's yeah. going to be error. Yeah. When you have forensics, bugs, you know, dirt, yeah. you know, any kind of forensic evidence. I'm going to take that over a person's word any day of the week. She was in there when they checked. They didn't see it. Yeah, maybe they didn't. Because she was underneath a bunch of shit. Yeah. They were half-assing. Yeah. They didn't... The cops didn't think she would be in there because that was too close. Maybe. You know what I'm talking about? So they just got Yeah, maybe went, they didn't even bother. Hey, are you in like there? Wondering. She's not in here. Let's come on. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of times... And, you know, don't, no disrespect to cops, but... They were busy. I think a lot of times, yeah, they're busy. It's like they have a lot of, a large area to search. They're not going to, like, fucking go through everything with a fine-tooth comb. They're just going to pop their head in somewhere and be like, well, I don't see her in there. I got a feeling they were already under the fucking... They were already under the assumption that she was taken somewhere. They didn't expect her to be so close. Yeah. So when they walked in there, they just called... Looked around real quick, didn't see and her, and then didn't see her. Say, yeah, okay, she's because this wasn't like a house; it was right. just a, it was a shed, and it yeah. was kind of a dilapidated old shed. It was like an old wooden, yeah. you know, like a boat shed type of thing. Yeah. It didn't even have like any windows; like there was no glass. She was in there; they didn't like see her. That. Yeah, I just I they feel were like, because even the guy that went in there looking for shit, all he saw was legs. He yeah. saw little legs sticking out, and he thought it was a doll. They didn't want. They didn't want to admit that they didn't search it thoroughly. I'm I'm kind of leaning toward that. Like I don't know, yeah. but I'm leaning toward that because yeah, I like I said I'll go with the forensic evidence and any day of the week over over a person's word, <laughs> like yeah, over, over people just saying we searched that look, and we didn't see anything. For you first time listeners, I'm ex military and I fucking dealt with law enforcement. Fucking worked for Louisiana State Police for a while. Just because they're cops doesn't mean they don't fuck up. Well, it's a job uh, like yeah, anything job else. People half-ass their jobs yeah. all the time. I'm not yeah. shitting on anybody. Everybody does it. You have to understand that your average cop really on the force for a couple of years before he gets fired or he quits. So just because a guy's a cop doesn't necessarily mean he's really good at what he's doing or he really gives a shit. You know, there's a certain kind of person that makes it as a cop and then your average guy just doesn't. You know, that, that it's the same thing with the military. Yeah. You know? 
So chances are it was just some guys that went in there, you know what I mean? And they were just like, oh, you know, she's not around here. Whoever got her took her far away. Yeah. And that was, that was what they were thinking. And they walked in there and called and looked around and didn't see anything. They're like, that bitch isn't here. And they fucking walked out. And then yeah. later, she was, oh, no, we checked. We checked, Sarge. That's kind of you know, what I feel like. We that. checked. We didn't see it. No, sure. no, no, no. She wasn't in there, Sarge. You know, that's yeah. the shit they were saying. Yeah, they wanted to cover their arms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they didn't want to say, you know, it's this fucking body. They want to say, it's well, right we didn't there. think she would right be there. in there. You know what I mean? That's awful close. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what I'm feeling like, happened. too. Like I said, I wasn't there, but that's right. what I want to feel like. All right, so what they discovered when they found the body, they figured that she had been killed at or very near the time that she uh, had disappeared uh, from forensics. It looked very much like she had been in that uh, shed the whole time she was gone. Also, they determined that the killer had stolen... The twenty dollars that she had that she had collected for her cookies. Um, they also thought that probably she had been strangled. Her hyoid bone was um, not crushed, but it was broken. Um, you know, which is usually an indication of strangulation. Also, she had been sexually assaulted, although they didn't tell her parents this for a long time until, like, much later in the proceedings, and they were kind of upset about it, as you might understand. Now, because they thought that 15-year-old Jeffrey Womack was kind of the main suspect in the case, um, he lived around there, you know, he said that he was looking for her, you know, there was like the weird thing about the neighbor and trying to cover for him and shit like that. So what they decided to do was that there was um, one of the homicide detectives, whose name was Detective McElroy, he decided that, um, well, I guess he didn't decide, but the, you know, the the police officers decided that they were going to let him go undercover um, and see if he could figure, find out anything about this Jeffrey Womack kid. Now, at this stage, a few years had passed since the murder because they couldn't really, you know, pin it on anyone in particular. So what this, what McElroy did was he went undercover as um, an ex-con from Alabama and he went to work at the same restaurant that Jeffrey Womack worked at. Now, Womack was still in a teenager at this time. I think he was only 17 or 18 years old. So McElroy kind of like goes to work at this restaurant as a cook and like tries to like hang out with him and like tries to go out with him at other times, try to get him to like admit something. Now, as far as I know, he never did admit anything outright. Um, some of his friends at school later said that he would make jokes about, you know, if they razzed him about the crime, because everyone at school, like all his friends, knew that he was a suspect or a person of interest. So a lot of them would kind of razz him about it. So he'd be like, yeah, I killed her. Yeah, I did this, that, and the other. But they all kind of thought that he was joking just to, like, get them to shut up. You know what I mean? Um, other than that, the cops couldn't really get anything on him. Um, even though they kind of followed him around for a long time. So, you know, there was that whole thing. Um, but one thing that made them kind of, you know, th that made them kind of interested in him, in him as a suspect was that what they did was that when McElroy was undercover, like working at this restaurant, he got one of the other detectives to come into the restaurant and come up to the bar and asked him about um like kind of asked him about the detective because he was pretending that he didn't know who the detective was and he said that jeffrey womack said to him he's like oh i know who that guy is you know the detective he's been investigating me for the little girl that was murdered with a tarp covered over her now the fact that he said the word tarp, tarp. He saw the crime was scene. was interesting because yeah. in the press, yeah. it had been reported that she was covered with like a um, like one of those blow up swimming pools. Yeah, that that was one of the thing that was one of the things that was over her. Now the thing that was found over her body was actually not a tarp; it was actually a shower curtain. But when they found it, it did kind of look like a tarp. Hmm. So they thought that it was kind of interesting that he used that word. Instead of saying swimming pool or whatever, like most of the press had been reporting right. that it had been a swimming pool. So that was one thing that made them like, hmm, maybe he does know something about this. 
That's why they kept investigating. Although them. there is there is room for error in there because when oh you sure, kind of fucking think of a swimming pool cover. It's kind of a tarp. Yeah, so I I I can understand. There is a little bit of there's a little bit of leeway there. Yeah, and like I said, you know, in light of later events, I'm not sure how you know, but okay. I'm just kind of going along all with right, it as all it right. is. Because, there, I mean, there had been other things. Like, where her body was in the shed, there was a bunch of shit, like, over her body. Now, as far as they could remember, the only thing that had been reported was that there was, like, like a deflated... I don't know if it was deflated, but it was kind of like one of those blow-up swimming pools was, like, over her body. Whether one of some of the press might have mentioned a tarp or a shower curtain, I don't really know. But the fact that he said tarp kind of made them go, ooh, because they were thinking, oh, everyone thought it was a swimming pool. So why did he say tarp? They thought that was weird. Now, they kind of like looked into this tarp slash shower curtain that they found that was one of the things that was over her body. And they determined that this shower curtain had also been used at some point as like a drop cloth when someone was painting. Now, the paint that was on there matched some of the paint from uh, that chick's house, like Peggy Morgan, I think her name was, who was like a neighbor of Jeffrey Womack. So the paint on the tarp was the same as the paint from her house. Now, whether that had anything to do with the murder or not, I don't know. Because like I said, it was just a shed. There was a bunch of shit in the shed. It's like somebody could have just murdered her and stuffed her underneath the stuff. And it didn't have anything to do with the stuff that was in there. But you know what I mean. They're just like investigating the shit that had to do with it. So there was that whole thing too. Um, they also interviewed Peggy Morgan, who, as I said, was the woman that ran the daycare that Jeffrey Womack, he kind of worked for, and she was kind of like super protective of him. And they said that she was really uncooperative and that when they were trying to like ask her questions about Jeffrey or about the murder and stuff, she was like, why don't you go out and find the real killers? And she was being really, Dick you know, must have been involved. Well, yeah, Dick maybe. Well, I kind of suspected, like, I don't know. Like I said, I wasn't there. Sometimes a woman can slip and fall and fall on a dick but to the point where... It, the know, way they're talking about out. it, it's like she was in her 30s, sure, and he was 15 at the time. Some weird but shit was going on. it did seem to me that maybe there was something going on between the two of them. Yeah, she protests too much. Because, I mean, the way she was, she was very protective of him, either because she was sleeping with him or because she thought of him... Of him as like her kid, yeah. one of those two things. Well, we're playing around, you know what I mean? There's no I'm just in, saying. There's no way of knowing. Yeah, like I said, I don't know. It was a long time ago. Right. <laughs> it, it could be either of those. Maybe she just felt like a mother figure to him and she yeah. was like really protective. Well, leave that boy alone. Like you would think of, like, yeah, like yeah. you would do toward your son. Right. Because, like I said, he was helping her right. out with the babysitting business. He was still kind of a teenager. It'd be sexier if Dick was involved, but you know what I mean? Fucking, it could have been. It could have <laughs> well, been. Well, it's always sexier if Dick is did. involved. Could, could be the. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk anymore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe you should stop talking. I think, I think. Well, I could think anything. It wouldn't make a difference. It was too long ago. I don't know. I yeah, don't know. and that's what I'm saying. Know. And I'm not really sure, like I said, because... I okay. Now, they determined later, and like I said, it, his her poor parents, Marsha Trimble's parents, did not find this out until later on, that she had actually been raped. However, her hymen was still intact. That's a little dick motherfucker Meaning, right there. Meaning, yes, that this was an adolescent boy or it was a man with a very small Microphallus penis. is what they call it. I mean, they did find semen, so he obviously they found some semen inside of her and they found some semen on her clothing as Not well. Not enough man couldn't even break the seal. That's what I mean. That's why they were God. thinking that it was probably a teenage boy. God. Although it could have been a man with, with a small penis. It could have been that too. <sighs> I'm just saying. Poor motherfucker. And now she was also, when she was found, she was dressed. Which made some investigators think that maybe she was sexually assaulted elsewhere. Maybe at the nursery that she was seen walking toward by some of the witnesses. And then later, kind of taken back to... How old was she again? Nine. Because they're saying that she must have been raped somewhere else. How do they actually know she was raped? Do you know how they know that? Because they found semen in her vagina. Okay, okay. All right. So, yeah, she was. Yeah. Yeah. It's just her hymen wasn't broken. That's what I mean. That's why they think that it was a kid or a boy or a man with a small penis. Because he did. He had a kid busted not, though. No. 
But a teenage might, boy can, sure. Yeah, but usually by the time you could do that, then you're already big. Well, it depends on the person. Yeah. Some like guys I said. Aren't very big, I'll tell you what, man. Right. Because just, they were saying, I, I mean, the cops from said. Ex, from personal experience, I mean, you know, motherfucker gonna get huge, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> around, around, around that time. I mean, he must have been. If that was a teenage boy, he must have been in a weird, what they call an awkward phase. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. To where you could you could deliver a load of semen. Okay, I'm being being political. Okay, being politically correct. You could deliver, but you're not big. That's fucking weird. It's because, not that weird, really. Well, by the time I tell you what, I don't want to give up any personal information, but by the time those hormones kicked in for your average guy, you know what I'm talking about. You're fucking big by the time you could do that. Yeah, but not everyone is. Okay. That's a weird motherfucker right there. No, I'm just saying. Well, like I said, that's why they thought that it was like some micro dick motherfucker or it was a little, it was a teenager or someone, you know, only a little bit older than When those hormones kick in, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I can remember it was like overnight. (laughs) It was like overnight. I'm like, who the fuck is that? (laughs) <laughs> that's usually how it goes yeah it's probably the same thing with women and fucking boobs you know what I mean like um not well one I day don't know. one day you might be kind of you don't have boobs the next day you got a fucking big ass boobs I don't remember it being like that though no okay although I remember being the first thing I remember is being in fifth grade I remember that I remember the first day of school in fifth grade and I had um let's say, grown substantially over the summer. Yeah. And I had to get a bra. I couldn't just get one of those training bras like an Ari There got his me Margaret. Right. I had to get like a real bra, even yeah, though it was it only was like fucking... Yeah, the shoulder bullet holders. Right, even though yeah. it was only nine or ten years like old. Suspension group. And I remember going to school the first day with you the bra, things around. and I was uncomfortable, yeah. and I had I was wearing this like white Carrying them shirt. things around like a No, I was bird. wearing like a white shirt, and it had like a... Like those three quarter <laughs> sleeves that were navy blue and it had a unicorn on yeah. it or something. It was in fifth grade. Come on, it was the eighties. And I remember the very first day a boy snapped the back of my bra. God damn. Very first day. For me Because a lot of fifth grade girls were not wearing bras. And also I was in ballet class at the time yeah. and I was the only girl a lot of the girls were the same age as me or a little bit younger. And I was easily the most developed of all the girls in that class yeah so i got so i had to wear a bra under my leotard so i got shit about that as well for me I, yay for me I just it's remember, so fun being I was a girl, like a, you guys one day i was well i'm not gonna talk about that <laughs> no tell me no i ain't saying that. why you you for can't me, do that you can't do that for me it was like uh it happened like overnight you know what i mean you know I don't I mean? remember it being overnight. It was but like overnight, you know what I mean? Fucking, you know. You're like, I remember it being like a several months process because it I remember like, like it was overnight. Well, I remember I, I remember being in fourth grade and nothing weird particularly happening, and then over the summer, and then when I started in fifth grade, then all of a sudden the nightmare began. Okay. For me, it was like one day I was like, "What the? I remember fuck? it. Move like, out of the way. Like back snap, up. Like snapping. I was like my back up. I was like, like back up." <laughs> <laughs> It just seemed like it happened, and like yes, yeah, like you're like yeah. bashing people aside. Fucking right! I was like, I was like, back up! All right, it's not the same. It for, comes. It's not the same for girls. It's, yeah, it's, it's just, not as fun. No, nah, I didn't know. It's like, shit. it's not as fun. <laughs> it's just, it was, was like, kind of like that. Like I said, oh, okay. I show up in fifth grade, and I had the biggest boobs of everybody in the class. Okay. So obviously, I'm getting teased. It's like dudes are snapping my bra. It's like because it's they were trying to get. It. <sighs> It's all, it was that, it's, it's and that, all and, part, it's and all, then it sucked it's from all then. Part of the game. It sucked until then, until it's the all following the year. It's all when, part of the game. When you know the the thing with the, the menstruation the happened. It's all part of the game. And then that was super fun. Also, Ooh. that was like early part of seventh grade. Okay, so what and else? Again, happens everything on this like yeah. All right, so in 1979, which, if you're keeping track, is about four years after the murder took place, they decide they're going to put Jeffrey Womack on trial for the murder, but they can't determine whether they should try him Mm -hmm. as a teenager, since he was 15 when the thing occurred, or if they should try him as an adult. So there was, like, a whole thing about that. Um, So they... uh, All right, so as I said, 
they're still kind of like, this is the stage, and this is, like I said, if you're keeping track, this is four years later. This is when the parents found out that Marsha had been raped. They didn't know all this time. They only found out at this hearing where they were trying to determine... So they the whole fucking Womack response yeah. to this shit and put him up for trial. Yeah, well. So, yeah, there was there was that whole thing and, like, he had a attorney and this... But, and his defense attorney kind of brings up, which was probably um, a pretty salient point, he was like, you know, there was a lot of, like, other weird shit going on in this neighborhood. There was this guy that lived in the neighborhood that went around exposing himself to little kids... Um, you know, there was all this other kind of stuff going on. There was this other guy that had like, um, you know, uh, children's clothing fetish, I guess. So he's like, there wasn't necessarily, um, you know, any reason to think that Jeffrey Womack was responsible just because he happened to be there at the time. And that really wasn't another, a lot of other like, uh, evidence suggesting that he was, uh, guilty. Um, you know, other than like the jokes he had made about, yeah, I killed her. Yeah, I raped her. Yeah, I did this. Just because people kept picking on him about it because everybody knew that he was a suspect. So, you know, there was that whole thing also. Now, wait a minute, I lost my place. Do, do, do. I can take this out. So, in, um, a few years later, they actually decide they're just going to drop all the charges. They don't have enough evidence. There's, like, there's nothing to, you know, convict the guy. So, they pretty much let him go. Now, it, it's kind of like a lot of, some of the investigators think that he's still guilty. So, they're still kind of like, you know, this thing Based about on what him. evidence, though? That's what I mean. It's like, I feel like, as much as I've read about this case... I feel like the only evidence against him is just that he lived he there yeah. and that maybe Marsha was talking to him before she disappeared. Well, that's not, that's And not. maybe for a while they thought that her rapist was a teenager just because of the not hymen breaking little, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and like all that. But that's not enough. That's not. Yeah. That is like less than circumstantial. Yeah. That's just like really like not even anything. Did they take a semen sample? Um, they did, but here's the thing. They took DNA samples. I mean, like I said, this was 1975. So when they looked into the DNA samples later, they were pretty inconclusive. Now, some investigators have said that they believe the DNA shows that there was a, there was three or four different semen samples, like different men, like she was gang raped. You know what I mean? But then other investigators... Yeah, by four little dick motherfuckers that didn't Maybe, break like it might have been kids. Doesn't make sense. But then some investigators say, well, no. the DNA isn't... I mean, they know she was raped by somebody, but they don't know if it was more than one person. So there's, there's also controversy there because the DNA evidence isn't good enough. It, you know, it's kind of degraded because it was so long ago and they didn't really preserve it all that well. So they're not really sure if this was one perpetrator, if this was several perpetrators. Some investigators have speculated that maybe she was gang raped by a bunch of little kids or a bunch of boys. And then they killed her accidentally because she was screaming or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of different theories going around as to what might have happened to her. Sounds awful unlikely, if you ask me. Yeah, it really does. Now, they did, like, all... For a while, like, in 1990, um, they actually redid, like, they, they did the DNA. They tried to, like, go around. They went to pretty much everybody in the neighborhood that was living there at the time that was about the age that they thought that the killer might have been and tried to obtain DNA evidence by basically, like, going to people's doors and saying, hey, can we have your blood? Can we have your hair? Can we have all this other kind of stuff? And they were being kind of, um, you know, a little bit uh, overbearing about it. And some people had a, a problem with that. Um, but of all the uh, samples that they obtained, they didn't find a match. So there was that whole issue. Now, they tested about 70 people at the time, but didn't find a match. Um, what ended up happening was that the, the shit went pretty much stagnant for many, many years. 
until the early 2000s. Okay, I gotta stop because I gotta find my fucking place. How much more do you have on it? Not a lot. Okay. Because the early 2000s, what? Yeah. So the case pretty much went stagnant until like the late 2000s. Now in 2008, they arrest or indicted rather this 60 year old guy named Jerome Sidney Barrett. And he was actually charged in 2008 with the murder of Marsha Trimble. Now how he had come to the attention of authorities was that there had been kind of a similar case that happened in 1975, only a month or two after the murder of Marsha Trimble, um, there was a girl named Sarah Dupre who was a student at Vanderbilt. And this happened, it actually happened before the murder of Marsha Trimble, it was about three weeks before. Um, she was also raped and murdered. Now DNA evidence pointed to this Barrett guy as uh, the suspect in her murder and DNA later proved it. And then later on, somebody said, hey, the M.O. seems very similar to how Marsha Trimble was killed, so maybe we should check that out. This was later on. And when they did the DNA, DNA testing, they found that the DNA on Marsha Trimble that they had found matched this guy. Now, this guy, he was 60 years old in 2008. So would that have made him a teenager at the time in 1975? Uh, maybe. I'm, maybe. Maybe. I can't add at this at this stage in my... I'm too drunk to add. Yeah, that's what I mean. But the thing about it, though, was that this guy had not lived in the neighborhood. Um, he was an African-American man, and this neighborhood was all white. Um, he had been working in the neighborhood at the time. I don't know if he was doing, like, yard work or he was doing some kind of construction. or so. It was something like that um, at the time. And he was, like I said, he had done this uh, murder of this Vanderbilt student, which that was only a few miles away from where Marsha Trimble was killed. That was Sarah Dupre. Also, there was a student at Belmont University who was not murdered, but she was raped. And that was um, in March of 1975. Wait, well, this is a black dude who can't break the hymen on a nine-year-old girl? Well, I, I don't buying that. like. Wait, how old was he though at the time? <laughs> because two thousand eight, he was sixty when he was arrested in two thousand eight. Okay. The crime happened. The crimes that he was convicted of happened in nineteen seventy five. He'd been in his fucking teens or twenty, about twenty, right? Right. Yeah. Maybe he had micro dick. Nah, I don't doubt. It. I doubt it. Why? Some people have that. <laughs> okay. Some people have that. <laughs> That's the thing. I think that brother was packing. <laughs> well, you don't know that. You don't, I don't know, know that. that. You don't know but that I'm guy. Thinking that brother was packing. That's all. Well, saying. yeah, but the reason he might have been going around raping people was because he because felt he inadequate. Little, yeah. Okay. Well. But anyway, yeah. So apparently, this murder has been solved. Um, as far as I know, last I looked, like at fucking articles from 2017, 2018, they have actually uh, convicted him of the murder of Marsha Trimble. So it does turn out that it wasn't just some teenager in the neighborhood that knew her. It was some random dude that was just working there. So they convicted him. That perhaps just saw her. Yeah, so okay. as far as I know, like the DNA evidence seemed to seems to, uh, you know, that... that seemed to, seem that, to be that, him. That seems to be him. So And he had done some other similar crimes in the area. There were a couple other rapes and murders in the area. Like, I think one of the women that was raped actually lived, like, right behind the Trimble family. Like, you know, just like their yard was, like, adjacent to their yard. So he was kind of, like, targeting some people in the neighborhood, it seemed like. Okay. So apparently this one has been solved. Um, and it wasn't who anyone who they thought it was. Which Once again, it was just a random motherfucker. Which I always thought was kind of itchy. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's like, and I'm not going to shit on investigators because, you know, nine times out of ten, 99 times out of 100, um, you know, when someone is murdered, it's someone they knew or it's someone they had an association with, um, you know, because random murders are so much harder to solve. But sometimes it is just some random motherfucker, even though it does maybe seem like it was somebody 
that knew them. And I and I understand why they pursue that avenue first, because that's usually who it is. See, most but these, not always. Most of these homicides are easy to solve because it's not a random motherfucker. That's what I mean. So you never hear about that. Right. So 99 times out of they would be right. So the ones to that presume. aren't solved, the ones that aren't solved, a lot of times there's a random motherfucker. That's why yeah. it's not solved. Yeah. Right. I think that's why. And that might be the case in the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders, too. It's like, I don't know if it was that Gene Leroy Hart gar- guy or not. I got a feeling it's a random motherfucker. But it might just be some random guy yeah. that they haven't thought of. Because if my- some just random fucking dude is passing through the area, decides to kill some people, and then takes off, you would never know. Well, that was my instincts, is that, is that the suspect, or, or the guy who did it was not a suspect. That it was a random person. It may be. Although was, that heart was, dude did seem like a douche, but other, I mean, I he was, was a shithead, but other than that, I don't really know if he did that or not. It was somebody who knew about that event. Yeah. Or knew about that camp, because like I said, it wasn't just an event that happened that all the camp, time. The camp. They came event. every summer. All right. That's what I meant. Somebody who knew about that camp and that summer event and decided they were going to get some. Like you said, that might have been some relation of somebody that had worked there. Yeah. You know, that worked there or had worked there somebody in the past, like a counselor it. or something like that. Some kind of pedophile heard about it. Yeah, it might have been something like that. Because that was probably like common knowledge in the area. Oh, it was yeah. a Girl Scout camp up there. Because it was a big yeah. camp. It was like 400 acres. Something yeah, when you like think that. about it, you know, you got a town in that area and everything. So it could have been anybody in that town. Yeah, that would have heard about thinking it. Thinking like, oh yeah, those Girl Scouts, fucking they meet there every year. I'm going to get some of that. Yeah, I'm going to go up there and... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then he sees a, he sees like a flyer somewhere about what the dates are, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go down there." Which is creepy because if that heart guy didn't do that, right. he might still be out there. Maybe not. He might the be dead by dead. now. I hope he dead. is. Yeah. Fucker. Probably dead. But yeah, but it does seem like they caught the guy in the it was somewhere. He case. did it. Something he did it, and he he did it again and got caught somewhere else, or he didn't do it again after that. Yeah, might have been a teenager fucking teenagers man yeah who needs them <laughs> <laughs> all right so we've gone on way too long i yeah. think in this on this true crime girl scout murder show which is kind of depressing yeah and i had to keep going getting him go to the bathroom and stuff jenny getting mad at me because i had to get up and go to the bathroom well he had to get well he has to go get up and go to the bathroom and he's going off on all these tangents and i'm trying to get it that's back the show, show though that's the show i know but it's like you make me lose my place like in my notes and then like i'm sitting there going where the fuck was i and now i could be, well because i'm the one that has to edit it so it's for me it's a pain in the ass for him it's just all fun and shit he can just like yap and then just like drink and then go to bed and then like i have to sit here and like cut out all the bullshit I'm fucking hungry, too. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> but yeah, you know. All right, so we're going to wrap up this true crime episode. Hope you have enjoyed it. Hope we're not too drunk for you guys to have, uh, you know, had a good time watching it. Because, you know. Man, these bitches are going to be talking all kinds of shit in the comment section. I'm going to have to be I'm It's like how our shows usually shit. go. Yeah, I changed my name on. I changed my name on. You did, on, on I know. YouTube. I so everyone would know who you were because they thought you were just like some random. Dick well, they uh, like they allowed it. They got a new feature on there that allows you to change your name. See, well, I thought you and could years do that. ago, I thought you on, could do that before. No, nah, years ago, it was at least on on the format that I had on my fucking little little thing, I could I could change a name. Oh, so I that that, mine. that that name was like from fucking twenty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Gloom Shadow, that shit was like from twenty, thirty years ago. Yeah. But now, you know, I got Tom, thirteen o'clock. Okay. But okay. now now because it's associated with our show, you can't say anything like super embarrassing on some other shit because I got other channels. Because I got then. my troll channels. I'll troll the fuck out of people. Go to the other one I troll. Do you really don't you have anything better to do? Yeah. It's old trolls. I do like to troll, though. You don't have anything better to do? Yeah, I got a better, I got shit better to do, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to troll. Of course I'm going to troll. Everybody trolls. I don't. I don't I, troll 24-7 I like don't, a job. I don't, I don't have time for well, that. You, you, don't, you, you, you don't have time for that shit. But no, just, I don't. You know, I'd be like, I'm going to fuck this dude. Uh, one, I don't have... I got, I got one, one, of, of, one, I don't have time for it, and two, I don't see the point of it. One of my channels is Tommy Davis. Remember Tommy Davis? The guy who got fired from Scientology? Yeah, yeah. And I'll go in there and troll Scientology shit under Tommy Davis's name. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you told everybody. You got so his can't picture and everything. Anymore. These motherfuckers don't know who Tommy Davis is. Tommy well, Davis was if used you're, to, he used to be the second in charge of Scientology. If you guys have seen our shows with the Angry Gay Pope, then you will know who Tommy Davis right, is. Right, yeah. 
So sometimes I'll fucking dress up as Tommy Davis and go out and fuck with people about Scientology. All right, that's kind of funny. <laughs> I don't have time to do that, though. but it's fun. Anybody that picks on Scientologists is okay with me. All right, so... <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap up the show. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, we're kind of drunk, but whatever. Yeah. That happens every time. It's okay. Yeah. So remember, if you like the show, like, share, subscribe on all your social media. Please subscribe. We need more subscribers. That's why we monetize. We're looking for more subscribers. Come on. Got to make money. You know what I'm talking about? Eventually, we got to make money with the show. We make some money now. Yeah. But, man, I look at some of those other channels. I'm like, this month for $10,000 a week? What the fuck? <laughs> Off a podcast? What the fuck? That's a ridiculous And I look at their amount. material, I'm like, their material isn't that much better than ours. Where's my $10,000 a week? Oh, you're getting all... <laughs> getting greedy. <laughs> He's getting greedy. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just fucking joking, you know. All right, you know, whatever. <laughs> what was I saying? Shit, yeah, I know. You know, that's the way shit is. All right, anyway. Like, yeah. share, subscribe on all your social media. Subscribe yeah. if you haven't already. If you would like to financially support the show, it would be much appreciated. You can go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash 13 o'clock podcast, or you can go to our blog, 13 o'clock podcast.wordpress.com, and there's a button in the sidebar Damn. to a PayPal account if you'd like to give a one-time donation. That would also be much appreciated. Some of our fans have done that, including Melanie. I see you out there. Um, also, if you uh, didn't see our last movie review, it was... Last House on the Left, the Wes yeah. Craven movie. So check that out. Yeah, I was wearing the already... same shirt because we just did that. I know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did that same. This is that's yeah. why he's so drunk because we did the Last House on the Left. I've been room. working all day doing this. Oh, you've been working all day. I've been, been working, working all day. day. <laughs> you've been working for a couple hours. <laughs> Don't give me that shit. Look at how he's trying to like fucking pull rank and shit. Ridiculous. Anyway, so remember our regular shows. Come out every Tuesday. Movie to, retrospectives I'm have come to bust out every. A in the face. Really? I'm gonna have to bust a motherfucker oh, bring in the face it. eventually. Oh, bring it! <laughs> not, I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking. It's a metaphysical motherfucker. Yeah. A metaphysical. Not motherfucker. metaphysical motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that's a new shirt. <laughs> have to bust a metaphysical. Metaphysical motherfucker. motherfucker. I haven't been this fucked up on the show. It's been a while. Yeah, I've been this fucked up on the show. You are unmanageable. At this, be, at this point. It's going to be all right. I can't even end the show. Look at you. You won't even shut up. It's going to be all right. Will it? It's going to be all right. We'll find out in the editing phase. <laughs> Some all of right. this might be Patreon only. I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm getting ready to sing. What are you going to sing? I don't know. <laughs> okay, well then. All right, regular show. I'm shows. coming back okay. one day. Come what may on blue by you. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, Roy Orbison. With the like fishing that, boats and the sails afloat. <laughs> I ain't gonna fuck with it anymore. Are you sure? I ain't gonna fuck with can it I anymore. Can I talk? You can talk. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and close the sure? show. Are you sure? Close the show out. I'm trying to. <laughs> but you won't stop talking. <laughs> I'm not talking. Okay. I'm not talking. Anyway. I'm not episodes talking. come out every Tuesday. <laughs> movie retrospective comes out every Friday. Yeah. 13 o'clock matinee, which is new movies in the theater that we review briefly, comes out every Sunday. So check those out if we have if you haven't already. And we are going to mercifully bring this painful episode to a close. We're going to go to the club next week. Okay. Mm. <laughs> and we're going to bed, right? No. Okay. No. I'm going to bed. Okay. <laughs> I'm hungry. We will see you next time. Goodbye. See you, see you guys around. You know what I'm talking about, dude.